Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you, just checking in to see how your week's going. How are you? Oh, Billy Backbrace. Oh, Billy Backbrace is fucking laying here with his legs elevated. Dude, underrated, throwing out your back. You get to lay around and cancel shit. Oh, dude, dude. Dude, I'd love to, but I threw out my back. Oh, you don't say. What happened? Oh, you know, the freezer, you know, the the goddamn freezer's at the bottom of the refrigerator there. And wouldn't you know, I went down to get a frozen waffle and the suction from the freezer just caused this, that little bit of resistance in a full. Oh, yeah, the forward bends are the worst, dude. And you're out. And you're out. You don't have to do fucking shit. I don't have to even emotionally support my wife right now. That's how I feel. You know? I don't have to do shit. So that's what I'm doing. I've been watching some movies. Yesterday, I fired up the fucking aviator. Um, I got like through the first uh, 45 minutes of that. Every, all, every movie that you guys are recommending, by the way, for whatever reason, is two hours and 50 minutes long. Casino, Jackie Brown, Heat, and The Aviator are all like three-hour fucking movies. Do you know what? I got time to watch them because I, ah, dude, I threw out my back. That's right up there with, uh, I got kids. I got to go home. The kids, you know, I got to get back to the kids. I got the, let's, let's top five. I got to get the fuck out of here. I don't want to talk to you, you know? <clears throat> You know when you just get cornered with somebody who just, like, won't shut the fuck up? Nia, you know what that's like, right? Uh, every day. Oh, every day. It's so difficult living with old Billy Backbrace. Um, when, um, you know, somebody won't shut the fuck up and you're not giving them anything. And, and the, you, the person will literally talk to the side of your face for 40 straight fucking minutes. They just won't get it. They just don't get the fucking hint that you as a human being have disengaged from whatever whatever life experience that has created them to do what they're doing to you right then, right? If that isn't working, if they can literally sit there and talk to the side of your fucking face like you're a horse and they're brushing your back. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you have to go with, you got to go with an excuse, all right? Now, you, you can't go with, I, I threw out my back. That only works over the phone and via text, you know, if they FaceTime, just make sure you're laying down and you just have that ah, ah, look on your face and you'll be good, right? In person, when someone's being the old horse trainer, talking to the side of your fucking head, right? I would say you got to go with, I got kids, I got a dog. Uh, I don't know where to go after that. Nia, what's a good one to get out of a fucking... Somebody's just talking to the side of your fucking head. What's a good one to get out of there? I got to get up early in the morning. I got to get up. Uh, show me I got to get up early in the morning. <laughs> Ding. Good answer. I got to get... You know what my buddy of mine used the other day? I got to take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> just... He didn't have to go. Wait, just to get out of a conversation? To get out of it, because this guy was so annoying, and he, he just kept trying to get out of it, and he couldn't, so he oh, went yeah, with... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I always excuse myself to the ladies' room. But the great thing is he didn't have to go, so then he just went in there and stood... You always have to go a little bit, I guess. You can make it happen. Yeah. Or you can act like it, right? You can just stand <laughs> you there. go in to the bathroom, and then when you come out, oh, I ran into somebody else, and so I don't get back to the conversation. Yeah, or Nia... You could just go with straight up honesty and just stop staring off into the fucking tree line and turn your head to him and just be like, buddy, you're killing me. (laughs) You're killing me. Like what? I mean, I literally have not even made a facial expression. Forget about sent any words your way for at least 11 minutes. You know? Those are the people who don't pick up on social cues. Sociopaths? No, not sociopaths. People who just don't pick up on social cues where they can't recognize the fact that you're not into this conversation anymore and they just keep talking at you. 
Not even to you, but just at you. You know what's worse than that? Is there someone that does pick up on the social cues and they realize you don't want to talk to them, which causes them, they, they, they already have like low self-esteem. So then they think that they can just like, they can fix it and they can just keep going and make it happen. Like they're going to turn you around. Yeah. And that's when you have to be like, you know what? I need to just run to the restroom. Or you just get graphic. I got to take a shit. <laughs> Real bad. Ah, oh. that's people. Oh yeah, I'll go with you. That's what the person will say. What? I'll go with you, and then like you're in the stall, and they're, they're like, "Oh, I gotta go." You know what? I they're standing go outside the stall, still talking to you. Um. Anyway, no, you got to go with honesty. I'm getting good at that, Nia. I'm getting fucking good at like, uh, you know, in that, you know. It's weird. As a comedian, you can do, eh, what'd you say? Eh, fuck you. You know, because it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's stupid. Everybody else is watching, so no one takes it. Well, for the most part, nobody takes it seriously. Um, and then came social media. Um, I'm getting better at that in my, uh, in my everyday life. I actually used that. This guy was just fucking, like, you know, watch... I. I just watched these guys break down a game, which I, there's nothing worse than listening to fucking people breaking down a game. Yeah, why don't you break down the game, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't even matter what they say. They're not held accountable. It's just like, just talk about this sport for like that. <laughs> oh my God, I just picked up on the social cue of your mm-hmm. face. Mm-hmm. You don't want it? All right, sorry. <laughs> see that? You see what I did? Oh my God, you know what you should have done in the middle of that? Being like, hey, I, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I just realized I got to get out of here. You know, I actually, Nia, I, I notice a lot of your social cues, and I got to be honest with you, they, they bug me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I hate when I'm interrupting whatever you're doing, and then, <laughs> and then you pretend like you don't hear me interrupting you, and you want to teach me a social lesson that when two people are talking, you just don't come walking up like a toddler and talking to them. I hate when you do that. What am I supposed to do? Stop, turn around, and address your husband. <laughs> so have you learned anything? Yeah, you know what I've learned? Oh, that no. you're going to take as much... <laughs> Why? Why did I ask that? If, did you learn anything? Never give Bill Burr an opening to explain himself further. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. are that person that just talks and talks and talks and doesn't realize when the other person is zoned out. That's my whole podcast. God, That's my whole podcast. You have to explain how the auto rotation works in your fucking helicopter <laughs> for the 20th time. God knows we need to hear that story again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guilty as charged. Judge. No, I guilty as charged. I realized the, the, one of the main things that attracted me <laughs> to you is also, once again, what always happens. It's the thing that fucking annoys me the most about you. Right, yes, exactly. What does that mean? That means I understand completely. <laughs> I don't think what I've ever, I don't drew think I. me to you now repels me. All right. <laughs> oh, you're trashing me again. So, what is it that attracted you to me that now annoys, annoys you? You know what I realized? It would be really dumb for me to answer that question. <laughs> so I'm not going to. Okay. I was kind of hoping that it would bother you that I didn't answer that. And you'd be like, well, what is it? No. I'm a, I need to know what the mystery is. No, I'm good. You don't care, but you got to figure out what fucking Susie Fake Tits said to Betty Botox <laughs> every week on the fucking Real Housewives, the Real House Whores of fucking Aberdeen fucking County. Huh? Where are they going next, Nia? <laughs> If you're running that franchise, yeah. where What's do you? The next city? Where's the next town that you can find fucking five washed up whores that didn't that married for money rather than fucking Vegas. love? Vegas. They haven't done Vegas yet. Mm-mm. Well, I bet those chicks would be cool out there. You know why, Nia? Because they know the score. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, nobody comes to Vegas looking for love. You come to Vegas, you're looking for something else. Can I interest you in a highball? Whatever the fuck you drank back in the day. Um, so what are you going to do all day today, Nia? Huh? I'm going to go to the gym. I don't care. <laughs> going to go to the gym. 
I'm going to fucking have lunch with my friend. And then I'm going to come home and be like, BB, get the fuck out of the bedroom. Um, why am I going at you today? I don't know. I was going to say, do you have nothing to talk about on this podcast? And I just happen to be sitting here. So now it's like, oh, you're here. Let me just use you. Yeah. When I was in improv college, they taught me to use improv college. college. (laughs) I actually have one accredited credit Mm -hmm. on an accredited course at improv college. Wait, what was your major in college? You told me communications, right? Oh, I had a bunch of majors and then I settled on communications. Yeah, and by the time I came around, they had changed that to media arts. So I don't think you can get a communications degree. It was media arts. You're telling me I'm so old, what I majored in doesn't even <laughs> exist anymore? I think so. At our school, I don't think so. I think they changed it to media arts, which is just as general. I, feel I like. majored in being the town executioner. <laughs> like they didn't know who that guy was. Like when he came up with his fucking shirt off, you know what I mean? But he has got a with hood the, of, with the hood on his face. Does that even? Um, I mean, how many executions could they go to? And you'd be like, Mike, I I didn't see at the execution again. <laughs> oh, I was there. I was. Uh... Mike, you're not. You're not the executioner, are you? Oh no, me! Come on. You know I can't keep a secret. <laughs> All right. So where are you going to be on Thursday? They're they're executing somebody else. Oh, yeah, I'll I'll be out. I'll be around. You know what? He was like that guy in Saturday Night Fever. I was looking for you guys. Where were you? You were up on the platform, motherfucker. <laughs> you cut Jebediah's head off? You knew him. <laughs> hey, man, when I put the hood on, I become somebody else. <laughs> oh, Billy the Executioner. Oh, Billy the Executioner. <laughs> was that a wrestler? The Executioner was Bernard Hopkins, I believe. Was uh, that a wrestler? No, he's one of the great boxers of all time. Oh, because I... He was the Tom like a, Brady of boxing. Like a, he went into his 40s and was still kicking ass on people who were in their 20s. It seems like the name of a, a wrestler, like an 80s wrestler, the executioner. No, they had... Um, Didn't they have the, um, the Grim Reaper? No. Am I making that up? You're now making me forget everybody's name because you're <laughs> almost getting them right. The Undertaker. The Undertaker. Didn't they have the Grim Reaper? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they have Portuguese power? I no, it was, it was Polish power. I knew it was Ivan something Putzky. to do with death. So the, what is it? The Undertaker? Okay, the Undertaker. Right. Got it. And he threw mankind. He body slammed, he choke slammed him on top of the cage, and he fell the essentially two stories and landed on his entire backside, from the his, the back of his feet to the back of his head. And I remember the way his leg was like crossed over his other leg. I'm like, that's how people look when they're dead. When they fall to their death, you know? Your shoes always pop off too, by the way, on impact. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you're ever hovering over your body and looking at it and your shoes aren't take a, on. Take a note of your shoes. Yeah, that means you're not going to hover back into it and get to tell, like Nikki Six when he OD'd on heroin, his shoes were still on. And that's when he knew it was probably boots. He's a rock star. He knew it was okay to float back into his body. All right, I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, oh, be- no! <laughs> uh, we'll be right back with boring your spouse after these messages. You know what? I don't have a lot to talk about because I haven't done anything because my back hurt. Oh, here, let me get you some time. I will tell you, I don't take that shit. Oh, yes, you keep you giving it. it to me, Nia. It doesn't fucking do anything except beat the shit out of my liver. liver. You're acting like you're taking it every day for the last month. What the fuck does that mean? I, I don't, I don't want any. I don't want any. Excuse me, Nia. I don't want any. Why would you want any? Do you want to leave instead? Hey, Nia, no means no. <laughs> don't means want any means don't want any. No, I don't want that stuff. It's not doing anything. This just has to work itself out. As I watch two hour and 50 minute movies. Nia, do you have a suggestion for a movie that I could watch before I get back out into the world? A suggestion for a movie? Oh, God. I don't know. All right. Fantastic. I don't want any. Why won't you take any pain relief for your back? Because I'm not in pain. 
You're not in pain. No, I'm in an uncomfortableness. <laughs> No, because I just don't, I don't think well, the, uh... I'm listening to you complain about it every uh, day, so why don't you fucking take something and shut I, it up? I haven't been complaining about it every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I am, you're, you're going for the laugh. I never said, oh, yeah, my back. Here. I'm not taking that. Take it right now. Oh, <laughs> oh I almost had it. Come on, sit up, please. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Just like I, four a leave out of my head. I feel like I'm in Who one of those. Asshole? I feel like I'm one of those psych ward movies. I'm where you, you, you. Oh Jesus! Did you go to the bathroom and get four happy pills? <laughs> wow! What a fucking oh my God, Florence baby. Nightingale. What if one of our children finds them on the floor and tries to eat them? You have to find it. That's well, I guess their little thing. back won't hurt anymore. <laughs> 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 I'll get the shop vac. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. When did you only start wearing jumpers? What are you, a fucking mechanic? Jumpers. Is that a one piece? No. These are my pajamas. Anyway, speaking of helicopters, I did fly the other day. Oh, God. And I'm telling you, you got to come up with me, Nan. It it rained out out here. It looks like you're going over Ireland. Yeah, and you sat in in, in that position in your helicopter for how long? Listen, you would have no problem if I was... How long? Uh, a little over an hour. Okay. And you came back and you're like, ah, uh, probably, shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have ridden my helicopter and sat like that for a couple hours. Oh, oh, my back. Is that what I said? Yes. I don't think I said that. Mm. I think I said you should go up there, man. It looks like Ireland. I felt like it was in the Irish Spring commercial. <laughs> the hills are all green. You got to see them. The hills have eyes near. The hills are all green. You got to go up now. Before it all turns brown and lights on fire and you watch people running for their lives. Okay. You can do whale watching in March. Go right down the coast of fucking Malibu. I would do whale watching. Would you do whale watching? Well, once you go to any local mall, you'll see him wearing Hawaiian shirts. (laughs) (laughs) There's a fun way to throw out your back. Hot fudge Sundays. (laughs) There is something so amazing about a supermarket with the level of shit that they, that they will sell in there that could fucking kill you. And you have to go in there and as an, an adult and just avoid all of that shit. In you. Do you know that in, in, you can go into a supermarket and they have fudge that you can heat up to be hot fudge. They got ice cream. They got whipped cream. They have this whole section of different toppings. Mm-hmm. Have, you seen, have you seen the madness? You know, when you go down there and you're like, give me some fucking cherry berry or whatever the hell you say. <laughs> and I go down there, right? It's probably my voice. That's my inner fat guy voice. <laughs> right? And you stand there and if there's like, you know. We should go see the whale with um, Brendan. Um, what's his name? Hughes. No. Um, <laughs> Walsh. What's his name? Oh, my God. I... Tagliabu. What? No, 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 no. Frasia? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Is it Brendan or Brandon? Brendan, right? Brendan Frasier? I've never been able to get either one of those names right. I know. Whenever <clears throat> someone's named Brendan, I call them Brandon. Whenever they're Brandon, I call them Brendan. Yeah, you might as well call your kid Tomato. <laughs> 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 hey, Tomato, it's Tomato. <laughs> Sorry, Let tomato. It's to me. <clears throat> um, is he a gambler? Or is he fat? Why do they call him the whale? <laughs> he's yes, he's like severely obese. Oh. It's Darren Aronofsky who did the wrestler. I love the wrestler. Black, I watched Black the wrestler. Swan. Black Swan, I couldn't deal with, man. I love Black Swan. When she was doing something with her nails or getting her back was bleeding or something, and I was just like, I don't want to watch this. That movie was incredible. That movie, I'm like, ah, I just love watching a tortured woman. What else did Aronofsky do? He did uh, Operation Dumbo Drop. (laughs) He did. Dennis uh, Leary's in that movie. He did Pee Wee's Big Adventure. (laughs) Now that's one that that that's that's the reboot. That's the reboot. What reboot? You do this, the second Pee Wee movie, which was Pee Wee's Big Top or something. You do it with Operation Dumbo Drop. You fucking reboot that elephant. You get him with Paul Rubens. Bam. And you reboot that elephant. Yep. You have Bette Midler sing the soundtrack. You are the elephant beneath my ass. 
fly, fly high again. Remember, that? Remember those menstruation songs that would just go to number one? You are the wind beneath my wings. Wasn't that about that one week a month where you guys are disagreeable? Was that in a tampon commercial? Or was... <laughs> You guys could see the way she's looking at me. Do you remember that movie? You really are the wind could, like, beneath so my wings. This is such an important movie for women. You know, each day a woman dies while her friend sits there singing a sappy <laughs> song to her. And finally, Hollywood cinema has devoted some time to it. Have you ever even seen Beaches? I just remember it was really, like, lit. Like lit, like fucking, like there's a lot of light on this movie. I think they were trying to make everybody angelic. What happened again? That's what you remember from that movie was the lighting. They were on like a beach, and the lady's like, "Hey, yeah. just to let you know, I got lupus." <laughs> and she goes, "What?" She goes, "I got lupus," and she goes, "No, no." She's totally codependent. That movie was so sad. It's just about lifelong friends. And yes, then one of them passes away. Yeah. Why do I want to go through that? Like, th- like that's enter- like people will sit there and shit on me for making fun of that movie. Somebody thought that somebody's losing their best friend to fucking lupus was this is a fucking this is entertainment. It's about having a deep connection to someone. And, you know, they grew up together as little girls <sighs> and like the, a lifelong friendship. That's what the movie is about. Yeah, which is fun, and it makes me feel good. And then all of a sudden, one of them gets an ingrown toenail that turns (laughs) green. they got to cut her leg off. Like, why do I want to watch that? (laughs) Like, there's not enough sadness. I go into the movies to be in a good mood, but I I fucking hate sad movies. Okay, okay. You hate sad movies. You hate scary movies. You hate suspenseful movies. Yeah, I don't need... I have all of that in my life. This is... These are the movies that Bill relates to. Anything violent. Funny. And funny. Yeah, violence and humor. <laughs> it's a narrow you, window. That's what you like out of your movies. I like it. No sadness. No scariness. Yeah, no best friend dying. Okay. Listen, yeah, I love how you're making me be the asshole. You're the one no, that goes... you're not an asshole. You're just extremely simple. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who goes to bed watching other people's fucking the mur- murder shows. I don't know why you fucking sit there watching that shit. You know what? I figured out why women like... <clears throat> oh, now it's all women? Okay. Uh, oh, who are you to shy away from a generalization of women? Get the fuck out of here. Fair but enough. I realize, Fair enough. I realize I think why women will watch murder shows because I think it gives us some sort of sense of control because you're always feeling like someone's either going to like kidnap you or murder you at any point anyway. So you feel like you watch these shows and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm learning the, the warning signs, the red flags. And you, all, you can sort of distance yourself from it and be like, well, that would never happen to me. Because, but the truth is, if you end up getting into a situation where you get killed, which is usually by somebody close to you, a man close to you, chances are like, there's not necessarily a way out I mean, you know what's amazing about that? What, obviously, what if you, you just leave said, them when you the first signs of any kind of abuse, but a lot of times you're just manipulated and you're in a situation where you can't get out of anyway. So that's like the really scary part of it. All right, thank but you, Nia. Why, thank you for you coming on it. here with that public service. You know what? You yeah, watch those movies. You, you watch those shows for these. Feel like you got have some sort of control <sighs> and understanding. Of it. Please don't act like you're not talking ninety percent of this podcast. You wanted me on this thing, so I'm going to talk. But now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> you watch those murder shows for the same reasons why I watch a Steven Seagal movie. Because as a man, you always have to think, what if 30 Jamaicans come into this bar? <laughs> a bar called Mark for Death. And they all try to kill me at is the same time. Is he still alive? Is he still alive? Steven Seagal. Yeah, Steven Seagal. Is he still alive? He's trying to defeat his last opponent, which is death. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, yeah, I think he's still alive. Oh, okay. You didn't get into the Steve? Come on, man. Steven Se- or young Steven Seagal? Why would Ponytail? I watch any of those movies? First of all... Because you watch murder shows. Why wouldn't you watch a guy walking around fucking everybody up in a bar? In the 80s when I was like a kid, why would I be watching Steven Seagal movies? 
Well, fucking the, the, wing, black... the wings beneath my wind was in the 80s. Yeah, I know, but I, like, I didn't watch that until I was older, and that's not exactly like my All right, genre. so when you got older, you didn't watch a Steven Seagal? I had no interest. Come on, man. That fucking jet black hair pulled back the ponytail? Yeah, no. I was the whisper never... voice? Hey, how you doing? No, I was never drawn to Where's him. Where's the gun, cuz? Any level. No. All right, who was your favorite action hero of the 80s? Schwarzenegger, no. Sly Stallone, mm. the muscles from Brussels. Who was that? Oh, Jean Claude Van Damme. Jean Claude <laughs> Van Damme. No, when he hit those splits, woo, baby. He hit those splits. Okay, so the split. You like the splits better than? Uh, no, I liked. Get um, the chopper. I used to watch Magnum PI with my parents. Does that count? Boom! 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 Yeah, I love this. You know what's amazing I is, like the is black how much guy Higgins who was um who who flew the helicopter. Wait, did he fly the helicopter? No, Magnum drove the car. Mm-hmm. The black guy he he did the helicopter. TC. I liked him. I liked Apollo Creed more than I liked Rocky. So it was very sad when he passed away. Okay. Um, did you notice when you watched Magnum PI that Higgins? How much the old Higgins? He's the butler. No, he was sort of the fucking old guy. He was the butler. He I, was like, hello, Magnum. <laughs> did you notice how much he looked like Hitler? It was fucking unbelievable. <laughs> now that you say it. He looked exactly like Hitler. He dressed like Hitler. And it was just like, they never really f- mentioned where they did with Hitler's body. It's like, did this guy flying from Argentina? I used to watch um, for this, this audition. Night Rider. I liked that show a lot. Oh, Night Rider was Fucking great. Mm-hmm. The talk and I rock. I'm more, yeah, I'm more watch those TV shows than the Did movies. you watch The Fall Guy? No. What do you have against a white man in a Chevy Silverado? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, what are the other action shows? That- Square Body. Oh, that used to watch. What about, um, what about Matt Houston? I don't know what that is. Dude, that was the fucking... The height of everybody, like Burt Reynolds set the standard of what a good looking guy was. And that opened the door for the guy who played Matt Houston, fucking Tom Selleck. It was, uh, 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 who's the guy? The guy eating the sandwich on the floor there who drove the fucking Trans Am. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. Do you know I did a table read one time and I was sitting right next to him? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, the, mo- the best looking guy I've ever seen in my life. Really? I was like looking at the guy going like, it's like fucking, re- like you drew him. Mm. Full head of hair, the you know curly, wavy hair, the chick's like, the fucking dimple in the chin. You know what I remember from Magnum Tall as shit. Is when he's in the, the opening credits, or the opening sequence, when the girl is like snorkeling or something and he's helping her, quote unquote, her oh, ass looks- up and he's like, oh, ho, ho, ho. I mean, just another day in the life of Magnum P.I. That's it's like, right. What is he doing exactly? Was he teaching her how to swim? Why did he need? Why did she need to be held up like that? While she's Listen, do you think Magnum? Do you think Magnum? <laughs> like, it what was, was he doing? First of all, it was raining. Okay, it was raining. It was raining pee for old Magnum. Oh, oh, oh! That's why oh, he had yeah, the t tops open. He didn't want to crack them when those whores jumped in his fucking. Fiat, whatever he drove, the, the Ferrari. Corvette. Or no, it was a Ferrari. Ferrari. <clears throat> it's funny. That's like one of the, the worst Ferraris that they made, evidently. Who's I Love You Baby? <clears throat> Who Loves You Baby? Lollipop. Oh, come on. I watched that with my stepdad. He, he used to watch that show. That's Kojak. Telly Kojak. Savalas. Kojak. He would watch the reruns of that. So I watched that guy. I watched the Equalizer. I watched that guy. The Equalizer. Watch- never saw that. Did you used to watch? I would watch-, watch MASH with them. I stopped doing that. Stop doing it. <laughs> but suicide is painless. Isn't that the song? Da, 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 da. Does suicide is painless? We're mean? in Vietnam with Alan Alda. No, they're in Korea. Oh, Korea. That was the, the thing when it was like... Um, the, the show lasted longer than the actual conflict. It's called the Korean <laughs> conflict. It was never called a war. Okay. All right. Well, I wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't yelling that at you. I was just giving you that information. Yeah, and I'm accepting that. Okay. All right. Speaking of that, I have other information. I have information that is actually 
unlike, of interest. Unlike myself, <laughs> it's actually exciting. Um, all right. The Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit is back, ladies and gentlemen. Tickets for the 10th annual, 10th annual, Nia, Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit go on sale today, Thursday, January 19th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The show is on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023 uh, at 7.30 p.m. at the New York City Center. The lineup includes Mo uh, uh, Ammer, Bill Burr, Shane Gillis. This is all in alphabetical order. Bobby, Robert Kelly, Eleanor Kerrigan, Jim Norton, Keith Robinson, Cypher Sounds, Ricky Velez, and Rick Voss. Rich Voss. Oh, my God. I said Rick. Mm -hmm. Rich Voss. And maybe some surprise guests will drop by. To buy tickets, to go to any of the following, uh, www.NewYorkCityCenter.org slash Patrice10. Uh, the theater box office is located at 131 West 55th Street between 6th and 7th Avenue. Box office hours are Monday through Saturday, 12 p.m. Uh, to 8 p.m. and Sunday, 12 noon to 7.30 p.m. There you go. Um it's the 10th one that we've done, but it's been over 10 years. He died in uh, November of uh, 2011. Mm. So it's actually been 11 years, if wow. you can believe it. Yep. A lot has changed. Um, <clears throat> all right, everybody. Look who it is. It's Nutrafol. <laughs> look who it is. Look who it is. Oh, look who. There he is. There he is. There he is. New there he is. I got to give a shout out to the podcast. Look what crappens. Right. Watch. What watch. Crappens. Watch what crappens now. They no, talk. <clears throat> no. Just watch what crappens. All right. Starring Ronnie Karam and Ben Mandelker. Yeah, fucking hilarious. I saw the podcast live. It was amazing. And as funny as they were, their fucking crowd was even funnier. <laughs> Those women were ready. Wasted. They were fucking ready. Wasted and ready <laughs> for them to talk about the Real house. So their it bit is so fun. Their bit is the Jersey guys. They always, they announce people and things. Like somebody comes walking in a room. They go, there he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> and then they, they order food. They, they order food and the waitress brings it over. There it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there she is. There she is. They are going on tour as well. Who are? Watch your crappings. They're going back on tour. Oh, I was hoping the Jersey people were going on tour. I've been listening to what they had to say. <laughs> All right, Nutrafol. There wait, it is. Wait, 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 wait. Real, real quick. Jersey Housewives is coming back. Will you be watching it with me like you did last season? Um, Come I on. will be, but I've, it's I've your favorite one. Come on. I feel like now that the guy's deported, she's already done her jail time. I mean, where do you go from there? There's plenty of drama. Cause, cause her and her this is brother, like on Roseanne when all of a sudden they won the lottery. You no, know, her were... and her brother have like major beef, so I feel like there's going to be a lot of slamming things down and crying and just like Italian. You're screaming. my fucking father. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of that, so it's it's going to be dramatic. <clears throat> yeah. All right. You know, I just like that the sociopath one. Which one? The one who she looks like uh, a villa velociraptor. The one who's just about? like, I don't know what I was signing. I mean, I just, they put it in front of me and oh, I just you're signed about it. Teresa? Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She looks like a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. No, no, she doesn't. You know what she looks like? She looks like that lizard in that thing where that guy was tripping and they, they automated it. Automated they, it? They uh, animated it. Uh -huh. And he was going like, uh, <clears throat> Oh, what was the name of that fucking YouTube yeah, video? Remember. It was this classic thing. This guy, they some people say it's true, some say it's not. It was a guy, and he was fucking tripping balls on LSD mushrooms, and he was just talking about what he was, what he was seeing, and he was just going, <laughs> "Look at that kid over there going crazy." <laughs> he was just doing all of this shit, and for whatever reason, they they took the audio, mm -hmm. and they just had like. Um, this lizard just saying it. And the lizard that they drew looks like that woman that fucked those people out of that money and acted like she didn't know what she was doing. Sorry. Um, I think you're getting your housewives confused, but that's okay. I'm not. But the Her that, husband got deported. In the, I don't know. Am I going to argue about this? You're right. You're right. I got the wrong Yeah, product. no, no, no. I know what you're talking about. Neutrophil. Using it with somebody else. Okay. okay. You don't have to choose between... 
Oh, this is for me. You know, you don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Uh, there's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Oh, well, healthier hair. It's not saying it grows it back, right? Get ahead of thinning hair. Oh, it prevents it. Well, it's too late for me. With Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. You can be George the Animal Steel. No drugs, no compromises. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. Clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. There you go. Nutra Foles hair growth. What? Nutra, Nutra Foles hair growth. I can't read that word. What is? What does that say? Genetics? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the what word above about? it. The word. Oh. oh. Nutraceuticals, like pharmaceuticals, but. Nutra. Oh, he said genetics. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nutra, Nutra Falls hair growth. Nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals go beyond genetics <laughs> <laughs> to multi target the root causes of thinning, including stress, hormones, nutrition, metabolism. Metabolism. Oh, metabolism. <laughs> 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 what did I say? Metabolism. What is? I don't even know. Me- metabolism. Meta world peace. <laughs> Age. All right. right. Aging. Aging and lifestyle through whole body health. Oh my God. Uh, physicians formulated uh, using natural medical grade ingredients. Nutrafol's drug free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. Why have a full head of hair if your dick's going to just be staring at the floor? I mean, good question. Um, in a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol's, this is like a mini-series of hair growth. <laughs> Nutrafol, <laughs> this is like two more fucking, three more paragraphs. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. I thought, they were just, I thought that said actors. <laughs> 3,000 top actors. People are like, oh, shit, the movie stars are using this? I got to get some of this shit. How, dude, I say five A-list actors are equal to 3,000 3, top doctors. <laughs> just to let the people in the marketing department know when they put together their memoir. Uh, you can grow thicker, healthier hair. And support your own, our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering the promo code Burr to save 15. It's rain and hairy men. Hallelujah. Their dicks are hard. They'll bang their wives. Um, code Burr to save $15 off first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere. And it's only available to use customers, to U.S. <laughs> to US customers. Yes. <laughs> Use customers for a limited oh, time. My God, Bill! <laughs> no, because I was th- I was I'm thinking of jokes. Use. I was just thinking if you could get Viagra in Nutrafol, and you as you're growing your hair, your fucking dick is coming up. I mean, your wife might faint. That would be incredible. Plus, free shipping every order. Get fifteen dollars <laughs> off at Nutrafol's Nutrafol dot com slash men, spelt N U T R F. N U T R A F O L. November. Uniform. Tango. Romeo. Alpha. Foxtrot. Oscar. Lima. Dot com slash men promo code Burr. <clears throat> All right. Lastly, but not leastly here, people. Oh, would you look who? There he is. There he is. True Bill. There he is. Uh, do you know, Nia, do you know why free trials renew without your consent? No. It's a business scam out to get you. <gasps> Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. I love, why don't they just make it illegal that they can't do? Oh, because they pay all the politicians. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. 
On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill. Mm. I love this company. Yeah, that's cool. You sneaky fucking bastards out there. It's about time somebody to catch a, to catch a sneak instead of a thief. Uh, because companies, please look over my shoulder so I don't fuck this up. Okay. Because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And Truebill, and your Truebill concierge. Good job. Nailed that. Mm -hmm. Is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Truebill has over 2 million users and helps save them over $100 million. Does that make sense? On average, 750 bucks times 2 million users? This is the copy, Bill. Like Matthew B says. Oh, Matthew B on the one and twos who says... In a matter of seconds, I save six hundred sixty dollars for the year on my Direct TV bill. Oh fuck, those sons of bitches saved one hundred twenty dollars for the year on my Sirius XM bill. Those motherfuckers saved eight hundred forty dollars a year on car insurance. Those fucking thieving guns. Uh, don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com/slash/burr. Go right now. Truebill.com slash Burr. It could save you thousands a year. T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L dot com slash Burr. B-U-R-R. All right. That's the podcast, everybody. Wait, can I ask you a question? Yep. Do you miss having hair? No. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is, Nia? It's, it's when you hang on to it. That's when you miss it. But I remember when you were first talking about shaving your head, I was like, no. It, and by that time, you'd already cut it down pretty low. But I still wasn't like... You were the one who told me to go. shave my head. Was that me? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. okay. What am I talking about then? I don't know what you're talking about. You were like, you would go shave your head. Oh shave, God, shave your right. head. You would do that. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're Come right. on, it's time, BB. Well, you know what it was? Let it go. It shave either, your head. Shave, shave like, your head. Come on now. I like the middle ground. I think I like it either like bald, bald, but when you were still like had a little bit of hair, like peach fuzz, that's what it was when I was like, all right, let's just get rid of it all. No. That's not what happened? No, when I had it longer, when I had the regular size you were, you said you should shave your head. I said, you think so? You're like, yeah. I was like, "Ah, I don't know. I might look like an asshole. And you were like, shave your head, shave, shave your head every fucking day. And I finally Hmm. just trying to shut you up. (laughs) It's a good move, though. It was a good move. Because you know what? Opportunities that open up. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a weird thing, man. When you when you have red hair on top of your head, they go, "You're you're you know you're the nice guy. You're the guy." Next, the second you shave your head, you're like, "Oh, you're a fucking asshole." It's like I've been trying to tell you guys that for twenty twenty five years. I'm an asshole. Trust me, people know. <sighs> <laughs> this was fun. It was fun. You ever been in a relationship where you just know without a doubt you love the other person more than they love you? <laughs> um, all right, this is the deal, everybody. This podcast is done regardless of what Nia is going to say after this. Please enjoy the music from the great Andrew Themelis. And we'll have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday. Monday morning podcast coming up right after the music. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's the Monday morning podcast for Monday. 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 Um, what is today? It's uh, January 19th. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually taping this on Sunday. First down! I'm watching the uh, Patriots right now. They're up 14 to 7. Four minutes to go in the fucking first. second quarter, dude. Dude, what are, you, what are you supposed to be, fucking Paul Revere? You fucking goddamn colonial hat. Um... All right. I got to be honest with you guys. I already recorded a podcast this week with a very special guest, uh, but it's it's a famous drummer. And uh, I think it's going to be too much of a drumhead thing for uh, all you guys who just like are used to listening to me talk about sports. So I'm going to do a quick one here Monday, and then I'm going to have uh, I have an interview with Chris Layton from uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble back in the day from Archangels. I saw him touring last year, came through the Greek with Kenny Wayne Shepard. 
Um, he does that Hendrix review thing, and he's actually in town here in L.A. working with Stephen Stills. So uh, if you're into drums, and, uh, you know, it's not, not the only thing that we talk about, but we talk about uh, his time, you know, coming up and making it and pushing through people being negative. little talk about whiplash in there. Uh, I think it's a really interesting podcast, even if you don't play drums. And uh, he got me some hilarious a uh, couple of hilarious gifts and then one unbelievable one because he's such a great guy. So please tune in. I'll post that probably on Wednesday of this week. So let's talk, start talking some. Make me a fucking sandwich, lady, lady, please. Um, hey, get in the kitchen and make me a fucking sandwich. You're watching a goddamn game. You know what? Houses are so close together out here. I shouldn't be yelling stuff like that. You know, I shouldn't yell. Yeah, look at me again. I'll give you another one. <laughs> Let's see if I can get the cops coming to my house. Um, I shouldn't do that. LeGarrette Blunt for a first down. Sorry, I'm not going to do that, but I do have the game on here. And I actually have to... Uh, I don't know. I got a ton of shit I got to do tomorrow. So anyways... What do we do here? What do we do? Um, I got to tell you something right now. I was I watched the Green Bay Seattle game, and I am over it. But I was absolutely fucking sick at the end of that game. Um, not out of like a hate in Seattle kind of thing. It was just that fucking prevent defense, prevent offense thing. I just, for the life of me, I mean, it has to work. It has to. It has to work. Not only has... Does it have to work? It has to work way more times than it doesn't work for them to continue the insanity of playing football for 50 fucking minutes, 55 minutes. And then in the end, you just play not to lose that. I, I Green Bay went into Seattle. They shut up their crowd. They they handled they manhandled them through the first half. And then when you knew Seattle was going to come back and have a surge, and they handled that five minutes to go, they pick off Russell Wilson for the fourth fucking time. You got the ball back. All right. Let's fucking eat up some clock. What, what do they do? They run the ball into the ass of their center three fucking times and then punt it. They, I didn't think they took a minute off the clock. The whole game. And you got Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback. Does he all of a sudden not know how to throw a fucking ball? This guy's a Super Bowl champion. Do you think he's fucking nervous? The whole game, you're playing to win. And then in the end, you I, it was fucking unbelievable. I can't imagine what it would be like playing for the fucking Packers. Aaron Rodgers taking those play calls. You know? All right, man. Five minutes to go. What are we doing here? Huh? What are we going to dump it off to a running back? Are we going to post pattern? What are we doing here? Run the ball up the middle. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, I get it. Burn a little clock here. Ready! Ready! Stand up! <laughs> Time out. Two seconds, three seconds off the clock. All right, coach. Second down to 10. What are we doing? Huh? We throwing the ball here, right? What are we going to do? A little play action fake? Freeze the linebackers? Do something here? Maybe pick up five, six yards? Run it up the middle. Really? All right, hey, you're the boss. Ready! Omaha! <laughs> Tackle. Timeout. Another two seconds off the fucking clock. Third down and ten. I don't even, the fucking Aaron's warming up his arm. What are we doing here? Come on. Who am I throwing it to? Run it up the middle. Are you fucking serious? The fuck are we doing, right? You, you don't want to throw the ball? Run it into the ass crack of your center. This is a recording. Blue 54. Set. Hot. Over. Seattle doesn't take a timeout. Green Bay kicks the ball away. They take off fucking 50 seconds, 55 seconds off the clock. Then what do they do? Are they going to go back to playing football and get up in their grills? Rush fucking Russell Wilson, put him on his back like they have been the whole game. Ah, fuck that. I got a better idea. Let's go into the prevent. Let's go into the fucking prevent defense. 
which is basically we don't want to we don't want them to score on one big play. We'll protect the sidelines. We'll give them the middle in 15 to 20 yard chunks while they burn the clock or burn their timeouts. That's the philosophy. So basically you don't give it up on one play. You give it up on six plays and you make every quarterback, every quarterback who's ever faced a prevent defense immediately looked how Joe Montana or John Elway or Roger Staubach used to look when, and in the final two minutes of the game when they actually played fucking defense. As far as I remember. So Seattle goes right. You know, you know what? The, and I am literally, where's my phone? I fucking was t- texting Paul Verzi. You want to hear my tweets during the end of this fucking game? All right, here we go. Let me scroll. Oh, Jesus, they're coming in chunks. Coming in chunks. Let's see here. All right, this is me after I watched them run the ball into the ass of their fucking center three plays in a row and then punted. All capitals. What a fucking waste of a possession. They are now going to ruin it. Oh, now that they're all that. I think they still had one more run to go. They are now going to run it. They're just going to Seattle's just going to take a timeout. Fucking eight seconds off the clock. Now they've kicked the ball. I write, what was the strategy there? Get the other team to use all their timeouts. They aren't even going to burn a minute off the clock on four fucking plays. Paul writes back. I know now Seattle has the ball and I text. They are literally going to get. They're going to give this team a touchdown just so they can burn off time from the clock. I can't tell if that is good coaching or it is done by the league to give every game possible a dramatic ending. This is when I'm sitting there going, I'm a comedian. What the fuck do I know about <laughs> about prevent defense? All I know is a fan watching. Now, obviously, they scored. I wrote fucking joke. First, he wrote, wow. Then he said, no TD. Thank God. Oh, that's when they threw it to Marshawn Lynch, who, by the way, is the closest thing I've seen since Earl Campbell. Watching an entire defense try to tackle that man is like, you ever been drunk with your friends during the summertime and all the windows of your car is down and you got everybody gets out of the car on a small hill and all of a sudden you notice the car starts rolling and everybody grabs onto it, sliding in their tennis shoes, trying to stop it. Eventually you fucking do. That's what it's like watching a defense try and stop Marshawn Lynch. It's fucking amazing. Um, Then I go, every fucking game, Paul, every fucking game, that stupid strategy makes every team look like the 49ers in 1989. Um, Okay, now Green Bay, okay, they now, you don't want to read all this whole fucking thing. It's just basically, I'll read the excerpts. It's the dumbest fucking strategy I've ever seen in my life. Green Bay Packers deserve this. Their fans don't. Then in the end, travesty. And Verzi said the, the problem was they kicked, they got field goals instead of touchdowns. There's nothing wrong with that if you're playing against a defense, I feel, as good as Seattle's. You got to take what they're going to give you. All right? You kicked the field goals, and then your defense was answering the call. They answered the bell, whatever the fucking cliche is, and you had the fucking game won. Green Bay had the ball back. They had the ball. They had their fucking destiny in their hands. Go for a first down. They, if they got two first downs, three first downs, that fucking game is over. All right. Sorry, I'm back. I'm back. I actually knocked my recorder off. I was saying I'm so fucking old that when I see people who run like me, how bad I run, they've played 17 years of quarterback and blew out an ACL. Um, anyway, so I, at the end of the game, watching them, watching them lose that game the way they did. First of all, congr- I didn't even say congratulations to Seattle. Congratulations. I mean, you, it's not your fault they stopped fucking playing. And I guess to say that, I'm taking away from your victory. But I'm sure you've seen your team. I think every football fan, you've seen your team do that. You've seen your team just playing football. I'm not giving up an inch. I'm right up on you. Fuck this. We're winning this game. And then you go to this whole like, well, you know, I'll give you like, We'll give you 10 yards, 15 yards, but that's it. I mean, just it's just the exact, I, I, I don't know, the mentality of it. I, I just don't, I don't understand it. it. It makes, you know what it is about the prevent defense? No game is out of reach. You have to be like fucking up 21 points. But if it's below 20, all of a sudden within five minutes, if you're going to play that way, it just seems like everything all of a sudden is in reach. 
And then the, the, the announcer's like, dramatic, turn of a left, hold on, I'm a Who ever thought what? When you start playing 20 yards off a guy? When you stop calling any imaginative plays on offense? And you, even Troy Aikman on the third time was going like, you know, I got to feel like they're going to run it here, keep it on the ground. It's like everybody knew it. <laughs> when you got two stand-up comedians texting what the Green Bay Packers are going to do next, that's probably not a good sign as far as if you're going to try and win a fucking game. Dude, I was so I was so upset because I felt like the pay, you know, I'm not looking past the Colts either. I know obviously anything can happen, but if we were going to go to the Super Bowl, <clears throat> I got to think that uh for whatever reason we matched up better with Green Bay. I just I just feel that the fact that we get for the most part, no pressure on the quarterback. And you got Russell, who's so mobile. Um, that would present a problem. And then we suck against the run for the most part. And Marshawn Lynch, even if you're good against him, it takes at least, what, like six, seven people just to kind of slow him down. <laughs> and Seattle's defense is unbelievable. As annoying as they are, how they stand over every person after they tackle them as if that person has never been tackled before. And as annoying as all those bandwagon fans are, which was hilarious to see them locked out. You know nobody who was at the Kingdom back in the day left that game. You know goddamn well. They were going to stay there even if they were going to lose. They would have sat there and they would have cried like a real fan and then walked out to your car with your head down. Well, it was always next year, right? Um I have a tremendous amount of respect for uh, for that organization. I mean, there's a fucking. I mean, obviously, the team that they put together is incredible. Um, but I would like to win the Super Bowl, so I would like to give my team the greatest chance. So I was uh, that was not the damn team that I wanted to play. But um, it's not even that they Seattle won. It was the way Green Bay lost, and I I had to get in my fucking Prius, <laughs> <laughs> fucking go for a drive, and. Um, I ended up at an Italian restaurant. They they make homemade pasta, right? And I was right before dinner, and they hadn't made. They were in the process of making the pasta and their sauce. So I I got an I got a salad and then just a couple of meatballs and sat there and had a scotch. As the Patriots were playing, recording the game, um, just dumbfounded how I watched Green Bay lose that fucking game. And. Uh, and somewhere halfway through that scotch that I was drinking, it just became hilarious that my team was playing and I was so distraught over two other teams that aren't my team that didn't knock my team out and that I wasn't even watching my team, even though I was recording it. And just that whole thing of like, why the fuck, why do I care this much? And um, I don't know, it just kind of struck me as funny. And then, of course, I'm talking to the bartender. You know, he doesn't give a shit about. Well, I guess maybe he could give a shit. He just needed money, so he was working. I just assume if you're taking that shift, you could at least fake sick or whatever. Um, so, anyways, uh, Jesus Christ. Two weeks in a row. At least it wasn't a bad call, man, but what the Fuck. What the fuck? Anyways, this is the Monday Morning Podcast. Um, I don't have any uh, any questions or anything this week. How far into this? I don't even know how many fucking minutes I'm into this because I, I didn't look at the first one. should probably... Uh, my condolences, not only to Packer fans, but any fan of a fucking team that had to sit there and watch your team have a game won and then go into the prevent defense. I, I'm really actually going to listen to Sports Talk Radio tomorrow morning to try and have some... Hopefully somebody... We'll explain it. Um, there's another one I don't get. Five seconds left in the half. For some fucking reason, you squib kick it. So then they get the ball in the 40. Like, how big a threat is that guy back in the end zone? What are the odds he's going to take it to the 40? If they wanted to, they probably won't. But if they wanted to, they could just fucking heave it to the end zone with Andrew Luck's arm, right? I don't know. I don't fucking get it. Um, well, Bill, you're a comedian. You're not supposed to get it. Oh, go fuck yourself. Um, so anyways, I got a uh, I got a crazy week coming up here. 
Um, if you guys remember, a long time ago, I did a movie out in uh, New Orleans called Black or White that starred, oh, they took a knee. It's another thing. Why don't you throw the Hail Mary? They used to do that. What is the problem? Um, anyways, I really sound like a crabby old man. Why don't they do it the way they used to do it? Uh, all right. So I did a movie uh, a year and a half ago uh, called Black or White um, starring Kevin Costner. Octavia Spencer, and uh, directed and written by Mike Binder. Um, and uh, it's finally coming out. It's coming out on January 30th. And uh, so we're doing all the promotion, all the press, and all that type of stuff this week, which should be uh, hopefully a good time. So I got a bunch of that type of shit coming up. And uh, I'm going to be on um, Real Time with Bill Maher on, uh, on Friday. And, uh, and then after that, on Saturday, I leave for my, uh, where the hell am I going? I go to Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Mumbai, all of that shit. And I get back to just going back to being a comedian. So I got basically a week of press here that I'm doing coming up. Um, I was in New Orleans this week. I did an, uh, had a quick three day shoot. And uh, an upcoming movie. I never say what they are until they're coming out. And then I make sure that I'm still in them. So, uh, you know, trying to keep my actor health insurance hanging in there. The SAG after shit. So, uh, anyways, let's do a little bit of advertising here for this week. Uh, what do we got here? Vegas.com. For my listeners, 10% off everything excluding air hotel packages. Oh, so you basically got to get yourself there and put yourself up, and then everything else is 10% off. Go to Vegas.com right now. When you book hotels, show shows, and activities, get 10% off when you enter my code BURR, B-U-R-R. They really do serve up Vegas from the inside because unlike other travel sites, they're from Vegas. These are not outsiders. These people are down there. All right? Everyone at Vegas.com lives in Vegas, works in Vegas, parties in Vegas. Pukes in Vegas. Top 10 Vegas must-dos. Take a photo at the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada sign. You got to do that. Shoot a zombie in the face. Goes without saying. Drive a really fast car. Sounds like they drive a car really fast, I should say. Sounds like they're going to take you to that racetrack out there. Jump off the stratosphere. That's debatable. Experience Elvis, of course. Be a rock star for the day. Why not? Hang out at a topless optional pool club. Creepy. Dance like a stripper. Get married at Denny's. Enter my code BURR, B-U-R-R, in the promo code at checkout and get an extra 10% off everything but air hotel packages. That's Vegas.com and get your bonus savings with my secret code that I'm telling everybody so it's no longer a secret. Consider yourself on the inside. BURR, B-U-R-R. All right, National Academy of Sports Medicine. They're here, exclamation point. New Year's resolutions, period. Everyone's got one, exclamation point. Get in shape, dot, dot, dot. Be healthier, dot, dot, dot. Get a new job, dot, dot, dot. Become a certified personal trainer with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And you can do all three. The fitness industry is booming. Of course it is. Baby boomers are still on treadmills. You know, they're blowing out their knees and their hips. They're getting the plantar fissuritis, whatever the hell it is. The fitness industry is booming, and the demand for personal training is soaring. I can't feel my legs. Imagine waking up every day excited by the fact that people are hurt, and you're going to make money off of them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not a job, but a rewarding career. Getting paid to stay in shape while helping others to reach their fitness goals. Oh, this is, oh these are personal trainers? I don't know what I'm selling here. I'm a whore. Um... You set your own hours. You work in health clubs, sports clinics, and corp corporate wellness. And you'll love who you work with. Finally, do what you truly enjoy and get paid for it. This is a pretty cool job. Get a head start on 2015 and begin your certification with the National Academy of Sports Medicine now. If you don't land a job as a personal trainer within 60 days of certification, they'll give you your money back guaranteed. Oh, it's a personal trainer. Sorry. Jeez, that's pretty cool, huh? If you don't get a job in two months. Call to action. Go to MyUSATrainer.com for a free 14-day sneak peek of their fast and fun online program. That's MyUSATrainer.com. MyUSATrainer.com. Re uh, restrictions apply. Visit MyUSATrainer.com for details. And then the last one here I'm going to read, DraftKings.com. Your season ending. Long. 
Fantasy Football League may be over, but there's plenty of excitement. Sorry, I had a scotch. But there's plenty of excitement every week at DraftKings.com. True story. Dave from Boston won a million dollars in one day just playing fantasy football. So did Matt from Florida and Ray from New Jersey. Ray, I heard you won fucking a million. You be a hero, you fat cunt. In fact, DraftKings has crowned a new millionaire nearly every week this season. The football action even continues throughout the playoffs at DraftKings.com. And be sure to check out their exciting money-making contests in other sports, too, like hockey and college and pro hoops. You've been hearing about big winners at DraftKings all year. Now it's your turn to win huge cash. Well, now it's your turn to try to win huge cash. Or you could give up your money and be part of that mountain of cash that they keep, and they divvy off a little bit to one lucky winner. Evidently, someone from Florida. Call to action. Head to DraftKings.com now and use a promo code DEFENSE to play for free in hundreds of thousands of dollar fan- in, in, a hundred, in the hundred thousand dollar fantasy football contest this weekend. DraftKings.com. Bigger events, bigger winners, bigger millionaires. Enter defense for every entry now at DraftKings.com. DraftKings.com. What is that, everybody? Say it with me. DraftKings.com. All right. Let's go back to this. Um, oh, I did another one of the goddamn comedy jams. Uh, this weekend with Josh Adam Myers. And uh, we actually did, um, I did a Pantera song, uh, Cowboys from Hell, was the song that I chose to do, uh, despite the fact that I don't play double bass. And uh, my double bass playing was was uh, was pretty horrific, but it was way better than I was before I decided to do that song. Um, I dressed up like Vinnie Paul. I made an ass of myself, and uh, but it's fun. You know what was cool was I sat down behind the kid. I wasn't nervous at all, which is, uh, which is a good thing because usually there's a, um, you know, because I'm stepping outside myself. But, you know, you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And all of a sudden it just becomes, oh, yeah, I'm doing this show again. I've done it before. I know what I got to do. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. The sound was really bad. We were outside in a tent. It's way better when it's when they have the show over on La Brea because you can actually, you know, the sound is tremendous. They... Had to turn down the sound because we were playing Riot Fest, some sort of comedy festival that they have in downtown L.A., and people were complaining about the noise, not even from the music. They were complaining about how loud the stand-ups were. I guess there was a uh, apartment building right next door. So my apology to those people, but, um, yeah, I went up there, and I had a, uh, I had a good time. So I have no idea what the next one I'm going to do is. If you guys have any requests... You know, if you have, I'm, I'm basically asking you guys to give me an idea of what song I should fucking play next because uh, I'm kind of out of ideas. I played a Zeppelin one, dressed like John Bonham, Motley Crue, Tommy Lee, and now I did Pantera. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to let the double bass go. I don't want to do another, another double bass song, but if anybody knows a good one. Uh, if you learned how to play double bass, obviously starting with Vinnie Paul is not an easy thing. If you know a Pantera song that, uh, cause if you play double bass, I would imagine that Cowboys from hell is pretty straightforward. Um, as far as the tempo is not that bad. Uh, if you know something else along those lines, that's sort of the next thing. Cause I always felt like if you're learning how to play drums for me, if you learn, if you're a white guy and you're playing rock drums for me, it was, you started with ACDC, Right. You learn the whole four on the floor, two, four fucking thing, right? And then the next thing I would do is then you move to like Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. Or maybe you even went up to Charlie Watts if you're going to baby step your way up. So it's a little more busy bass drum, you know? And uh, then I would go Appetite for Destruction. And then from there, it would basically be like whatever direction you wanted to go in. Uh, And here I am talking about drums again. I don't know what I'm supposed to be talking about. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to be talking about here. Um, anyways, hey, I saw that movie Boyhood. Did you guys see that shit? It's pretty interesting where they have... Uh, basically, the, they shot the movie over 12 years, and you get to watch this little boy that they cast grow up. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Domestic violence and sexual assaults are hard subjects for everyone to talk about. So let's show all these people crying. I don't like it when people get raped. (laughs) Who does? What are they going to do next? Funerals? 
where you actually cared about the person who died are hard to talk about, and then I have to watch people crying. For the love of God, who are those fucking commercials for? Does the person who sexually assaults someone just sees Hillary Swank crying and then goes, you know what, I'm going to stop sexually assaulting people. I don't, I don't, for the fucking life of me. Who doesn't care about victims of basically anything? What are they, are they trying to move me to do what? What are they trying to do? I think they're trying to get my money on some level, right? So that they can siphon off 20% of it so they can go out and go buy themselves a pink Bentley and then they throw some money at the, uh, you know, no more backhands dot org, whatever the fuck they're doing. I just, for the life of me, those fucking goddamn commercials. And as annoying as those are, I don't understand why you kick another team's fucking ass for 55 minutes and then decide to lay down on the goddamn ground for the final. Your own choice. Your own fucking choice. Um, God damn it. I like that. I like Seattle. I really like that fucking team, but I just cannot stand all the fucking pomp and circumstance around it. Did you guys see that they have two giant screams allegedly measuring how loud the fucking crowd is? I mean, isn't it enough that they built a fucking stadium to try to just hold those people's hands into trying to sound like they give a fuck? What else do they have to do to coerce these people into cheering? Every goddamn game, they got to have some fucking war vet or fucking 80, 1980s action hero come out and wave a fucking hanky to get them all excited. You're not excited? It's a fucking playoff game? You're going to try to be the first team to repeat in like 10 fucking years? That's not enough excitement. You know, you need Frank Stallone to come out there and swing a dirty diaper over his fucking... Oh, yeah, that's right. We're supposed to give a fuck. Ugh. Worst dressed fans. Who are you going with? Honorary mentions got to be the Black Hole Oakland Raiders. That absolute fucking shit show of humanity. I would say Cleveland Browns, the dog pound, if they put them on TV more. Remember that when they used to bark at the camera and eating dog biscuits and you're supposed to sit at home going, wow, these people are crazy. (laughs) They had money, legal tender to buy football tickets and they went to their assigned seat. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ with the pretend crazy. I got to be honest with you. The person who's really just going to fucking knock you out. And make you fucking, you know, eat the rest of your meals for the rest of your life sipping through a fucking straw is not the guy that's dressed up like a dog or the dude with the spikes coming out of his fucking shoulder pads. It's going to be that quiet guy with the dirty hat. (laughs) The dude with the neck tattoo. It's going to be that person. Because they know that they're crazy and they know that they're going to fuck somebody up. And the last thing they want to do is fucking... Put somebody in a coma and then run out of a stadium dressed like Big Bird because they're going to get caught. They they want it. They want to blend in with the fucking crowd. Wouldn't you think? Am I out of my mind to think that shit? I have no idea. So anyways, I just heard a fucking plane fly over my head. I'm actually studying for my exam next month to get my uh, my license. And I'm not going to fly here for the next uh, couple of weeks due to my schedule and all that type of shit. So I am literally studying um, bringing my notebooks with me, taking practice tests. Oh shit. I should have had some of that stuff in front of me. I should have taken one of those goddamn tests. All this type of shit you have to know if you're flying East to West and you slow down, you know, which way is the needle going to point? Is it going to point down towards the South or the North on your fucking compass? I already can't even fucking remember. I've answered that question so many fucking times. I still forget. When you're flying east, when you fly east to west, you fly at an even altitude plus 500. West to east, you fly at an odd plus 500. So you wouldn't fly at 5,000, you'd fly at 5,500. If you're going the other way, you'd fly 4,500, not 4,000. All of that shit, plus all this shit about the weather. All right, what do you got here? Second half is starting. How about fucking Amendola? Has this guy been stepping up or what? 
I was like most people. I thought the guy, like every time he went to go pick up his helmet, he blew out his hamstring. And all of a sudden, I mean, he had such a fucking... I didn't really talk about the game last week. I was so fucking uh, on my period about the Des Bryant catch that wasn't a catch. And uh, I don't know. I, what am I going to learn? I can't fucking have the TV on and try to fucking riff on this goddamn thing. You would think. Oh, by the way, can we talk about that lady? The fucking lady. There's a woman out there. Um, she fucking was married to a guy who was a billionaire. She's getting a divorce. The guy wrote her a check just under a billion dollars and she turned it down. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking. What a fucking gold digging whore. This is right up Bill's alley. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to tweet a fucking link to this article and this will get him going on the podcast and then he'll have a shit fit and I'll laugh as I'm sitting in my cubicle. Well, surprise, surprise. I'm not really having a shit fit about this because I don't think it's about the money. This is the deal. This broad. All right. This fucking twinkle toes here. All right. All little fucking sugar tits here. She married this guy. This guy was worth 50 million bucks. He was an oil man. Get off my fucking property. There ain't no global warming. Good. I like that there's a hole in the ozone layer. Makes me feel like I'm closer to God. Right? He's an oil man. Hey, I'll tell you what, Mr. President. I don't even know why I have to call you Mr. President. I fucking put you in office with my goddamn money. Look at me when I'm talking to you, Obama. All right? My granddaddy put that dictator in fucking power. And he was supposed to give us our little gold little shit there, right? He's supposed to give us our liquid gold, right? He ain't doing it no more. You got to go over there. You got to take that fucker out. You understand me? I don't give a fuck how you do it. He's an oil man. It's a fucking oil man. All right? He's got Slim Whitman on Laserdisc, right? That's Irish. What was the fucking Slim Whitman? He sold over 9 million records. Um, anyways, I'm all over the fucking map here. See, I'm back to me. I'm not looking at the TV anymore. Um, so this fucking guy, he's got, he's got a $50 million business. This, he already has this. And this woman does not sign a fucking, he doesn't sign a prenup with the woman. According to her, she didn't take the billion dollar payout because now 26, 27, 28 fucking years later, they're going for a divorce. This guy's company is worth $20 billion, according to her. All right. Now, here's the thing. She's like, I was with this guy, and I supported him, and I held down the fucking home front and all that. That's got to be worth something. This was fucking crazy to me. It's like, you know, with all due respect, sweetheart, this guy made $50 million without you. Okay? Look, I could see if the guy had a couple hundred grand in the bank. All right, maybe, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? If you make $50 million, give me a fucking break. If you started out with nothing and you're worth $50 million, you fucking, you know what you're doing. At that point, once you have $50 million, that's, that's when, that's when you got your own, you're starting to have your own plane. You're in a gated community. You got your own security system. You know, you fucking kill somebody and the cops go down to your house and they're talking to your lawyer in the driveway as you're sitting there eating fucking escargot and an English muffin. And they're asking your fucking lawyer if you, if you wouldn't mind turning yourself in. Over the next six, seven days, you're like that level fucking rich. And once you're that level rich, it's, it's all fucking downhill. You're meeting the people that are running the world. You're meeting the people in the Bilderberg group. You're meeting the people in the other groups that I don't know about or what the fuck they talk about, but I pretend like I do. You're at that level of fucking wealth. All right? So this fucking guy grows it to $20 billion, and she gets a check for a billion, basically. And uh, she says she doesn't want it. She wants more. So everybody's saying that she's a gold digging whore. You know what I really think it is? And she's saying that she supported him and helped him build. It's like, go fuck yourself. All right. Let's let's just say for whatever fucking reason, I met an unknown Lady Gaga in the East Village 10, 12 fucking years ago. Right. And she's down there ripping off Madonna songs or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? There's something about her, though. You know, she's got nice legs. She's got a nice ass. I mean, I like the imperfections. I like that giant nose. Look at me. I got red fucking hair. It's falling out. I think we can make a good couple. You know, 
We're both a mess. Two negatives make a positive. We'll make a beautiful baby. So I start fucking hanging out with her. Next thing you know, we fall in love. Garrett Blunt! Go, motherfucker! Um, so then we think, uh, all right. You know, we get married. Okay? And let's just say what I, whatever I'm doing. I'm fucking... I make keys. That's what I do. That's my job. Okay? And she's out down there. She's down the village and she's fucking, you know, she's making her own meat dress. You know? She's going out. She's making money in a coffee house and she goes right to the deli and she buys more meat. She's investing in herself. She's building her career. She's playing the fucking piano. She's coming home and she's like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, it sounds good, honey. Right? I'm over there. I'm knitting a fucking sweater. You know, I got a pot roast in the goddamn oven or whatever. Okay? And then she becomes Lady Gaga. I get to quit my fucking job. I'm Mr. Gaga. I get to go on Oprah and sit there silently, you know, as Oprah talks to lady for fucking an hour. And then finally she says, well, what, what do you see in her? And then I already have some pre-written speech about how I'm Gaga about Gaga. I'm Gaga for Gaga, whatever the fuck happens. Right. And let's just say in the end of all of that, I'm walking down the fucking hall blinded by her gold records platinum records and all that shit every morning when i go to brush my teeth i gotta fucking i gotta put on my uh my amber visions just to get there so i don't fucking walk into the walk-in closet instead of the bathroom let's say at the end of that she gets sick of me and she kicks me to the fucking curb all right and let's say she's worth a hundred million dollars and she turns around and says i'm gonna give you bill i'm gonna write you a check Let's do the same thing. Let's say the 20 billion. Just say she's worth 20 million. And she says, Bill, I'm going to give you a million dollars. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, thank you, Lady Gaga. It was awesome. I I was just making keys. I wasn't going to make a million dollars in my lifetime. All right. I'm going to take this money and uh, I'm going to pay my taxes on it. I'm going to get myself a little fucking house. You know, and I'm going to make keys in the back of it. I'm going to get my life back and I'm going to find I God knows you gave me plenty of fuck. And I would buy, you know what I would do with that? I would go buy a fuck. Everybody needs keys. Touchdown Patriots. Who the fuck was that? Who just scored that? Nate Solder just scored his, his first touchdown ever. Nice. 23-7. Oh, did we match up better against the Packers? So anyway, oh, look at our, look at. Two cheaters talking there (laughs) on the sidelines. Two convicted cheaters. That was a nice play. That was a nice play. How did you like the video? I love the video. Um, Anyways, you got to have a sense of humor about your own fucking team, don't you? Most people don't, but I do. Um, Anyways, so let's go back here. Uh, Yeah, if she gave me a million bucks, what I would do is I would find a house that cost like, I don't know, like 150 grand, you know, and I would put down a ridiculous amount of money on it. And then I put the rest of the money away and I would start cutting keys again out of the back of my house. And I get that business going and I would fucking build it up. And then I go on to, uh, Instead of FarmersOnly.com, I'd go on like uh, KeymakersOnly.com and I'd try to meet somebody else. That's what the fuck I would do. I would never try to take her money. I'd be like, you know what? I know I gave you support. I know I said that was a beautiful song. I know you wrote a couple songs about us. Instead of Dear Ben, you wrote Dear Bill. I get it. But I can't sing. I can't play a fucking piano. Who's kidding who? We both know why I lived the life I lived for the last 10 years. It was because of you, Lady Gaga. And to think I got to live that life and in the end of it, you're going to give me a million bucks to leave? Yeah, you're a fucking saint. I still love you, Lady Gaga, even though you don't love me anymore. I get it. I don't even know why you love me in the first place, but God bless you. That's probably why you write such wonderful songs. That connects with an entire demographic of people. Continued success. Thank you for that million dollars. And I would fucking leave. All right. I got too much fucking pride to sit there if somebody doesn't fucking want me to then try to take everything they got. I mean, just I, I couldn't fuck. I, the second somebody doesn't want me around, I'm like, all right, Jesus, I didn't know I was annoying you. I get it. 
Sorry. Can I uh, grab my things now? Do you want to want me to send somebody else? I would just get the fuck out of there. Um, so anyway, so that seems to be, you know, this lady here that she, she got a billion dollars um, and she says it's not enough. What I honestly think it is, I just think it's an emotional thing for this woman. I don't think it's a money thing because you can't spend that. You can't spend all that fucking money. Right. Did you guys, they actually showed a copy of the, uh, of the check that this dude wrote to his ex-wife. He didn't write it on one of those business checks, you know, that are sort of extra long and the whole extra area, the memo section that you write stuff. He wrote it on like a personal little check, like the same kind of check, like, you know, somebody living week to week, the, one of those little checkbooks. He wrote a check for like $989 million. $899,000.31, whatever the fuck it was. And I think what he did was, this guy's obvious, I don't know what the fuck, maybe he's just good at business. I think he just sat down after they decided on the number, and I bet he did it right in front of her. After 26 fucking years, okay, he's walking away. He's leaving, and he just sits down, and he's just writing money just to make her leave and he just sits down and goes scribble 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 sign 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 dot the i cross the fucking t tears it out here you go beat it lady i just think it came across like that and it fucking pisses her off <laughs> and she's just like this is the thing of the worst thing you can have when a woman's breaking up with you or if you're breaking up with a woman is if she's not over you if she's over you it's gonna go smoothly you don't have to deal with her fucking, you know, putting a, your, your pet rabbit in a goddamn stew. All right. But if they're not over you, you got to fucking let them down easy. You can't just push them down the emotional elevator shaft. All right. You're going to have a major fucking problem. And I think this guy, he just fucking fired off the check like he was paying another bill. And I, she just was insulted by that. And she's think doing the math in her head like, you know, this motherfucker is going to. I actually talked a little bit about this on the Chris Layton podcast, so I forgive me if there's a little bit of overlap, but I just wanted to hear what he thought about it. Um, I think that uh, I I don't know. I just think that they they want you they want you to hurt. They just want you to hurt. I don't know what it is. Not all of them, just some of them. And I think that she didn't get a satis- enough of a satisfied hurt look on this guy's face. There wasn't enough pain. I think he just treated her like he had to get the gutters fixed and had some professional come over and did it. And he just fired off this fucking check and it just pissed her off. You know, because she's more than taken care of for the rest of her fucking life. Anything she could ever want, she's, it's all good. But I think the fact that he still has so much more money and it didn't hurt him to write that check. That and she knows that he has enough money to get like, you know, I mean, you got 20 billion dollars there's like a victoria's secret model that will pretend to give a fuck about you for a good year year and a half and you can do that for the rest of your life as you ride around in ferraris now her she's a woman guys don't work that way we don't really give a shit about money you know we're more like enamored by looks you know it's both of our fucking weaknesses whatever you guys are into stuff we're into fucking uh you know tits and ass so which is why you know we will date Somebody is dumb as a fucking rock and you will also date some ugly old balding douche, you know, because they can take care of you. It's, it's kind of what we do. So I'm not really – a lot of people wanted me to go off on her like she's a gold digging whore. I don't think she is. I think she's uh, – I think she's hurt and uh, she's hurt how easy this guy is just getting over. I know all you guys are sitting there going like, dude, what the fuck? He's writing her a check for a billion dollars. I know that hurts. Dude, you got $20 billion. Come on, man, if that's true. If it's true and you got $20 billion, <laughs> yeah, I'll write you a fucking check for a, for a bill. That wouldn't hurt me at all. There you go. Bing, bang, boom. Beat it. Whistle and Dixie. Jesus Christ, the fucking interest alone on that money. You, you, by the time you walk down the driveway or she walks down the driveway leaving you, your money is probably already made fucking $30 million. What the fuck do you care? Um, I know he's probably, that's obviously not $20 billion liquid. He's got a lot of that tied up in derricks, right? Some giant fucking ranches, some oil rags, some trucks. Um, look at that Pats fan. 
that looked like Jim LaLetta. Um, comedian I, I knew back in Boston. Uh, drinking a Sam Adams there. Anyways, it's 24 to 7. 909 left to go in the third quarter. Patriots D is looking good, but I, I just don't think there's anything in the AFC that was is really going to uh, can get you ready for what Seattle's going to be bringing on at the, at least a defensive level. Uh, I don't know. That was I, probably one of the worst games as a pro that Russell Wilson has had. I have no. I really don't have. I don't have any idea on what's going to happen. I like if the Patriots play Seattle in the Super Bowl, it will not surprise me if we win or we get absolutely ass raped. I have no fucking idea. I've watched that little amount of football um, this year because I've been so fucking busy. Um, but that's going to be amazing. And how about Robert Kraft, huh? I know I've mentioned this before. What a fucking owner he is. Three coaching hires, Bill Parcells, unknown Pete Carroll as far as like at the pro level, and then Bill Belichick. And it's pretty cool that now his uh, – He's basically these two guys are looking like they're going to face each other in the Super Bowl. Uh, I would love to hear that conversation. I wonder if they, I wonder if they've ever talked since he fired him. I'm sure he sent him some sort of fucking um, what the fuck was it one eight hundred fruit? What was that thing when I lost my shit when I was reading it? I can't remember what the fuck was it. Fruitbaskets.org. I forget. Uh, me undies, everybody. Here we go again. Me undies, me undies. No more sweaty balls. But doop, boop, boop. Me undies, me undies. You can buy them at the fucking mall. Walk up to a fucking chick. You don't have to worry that your dick's gonna stick. Oh, you are wearing fucking me undies. You got no sweaty balls. Oh, yeah. You can talk to the fucking chick without tripping. Get yourself some no more sweaty balls. 90%. That's the percent of your life that you're in your underwear there, right? Um, and underwear gets old fast. You know that feeling of putting on old saggy underwear? You need to know the feeling of great fitting underwear that is two times softer than cotton. You need to know about MeUndies, MeUndies, no more sweaty balls, MeUndies.com. MeUndies is the most comfortable underwear you will ever wear. Four out of five ball bags say, we love me undies. And it's insane how good they make you feel. They fit perfectly. They don't ride up on your fucking ass crack. And they literally pull moisture away from your skin. Gross. So you can stay cool. Personalize. I have mine on right now. I didn't. I had them on earlier. And I am floating. I wouldn't say I'm floating, but I was comfortable. You know what? I wore them last night when I was pretending to be Vinnie Paul. And that's the best I ever played live. And who am I giving credit to? Josh Adam Myers? Nope. Me undies. Me undies. I'm fucking butchering double base. Uh, I can't even tell you how great I feel when I'm staying cool and comfortable down there all day. Well, these are all examples of stuff that I'm supposed to say. It's such a profound impact to the way I feel. Don't say impact around your balls. Anyways, they're great. I've tried them on Gronk for a first down. I've tried them. They have cool styles for both men and ladies. Oh, good. Me undies. Me undies. No more clammy twats. Oh, yeah. And look great. Check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com. This quality would typically retail for two times the MeUndie price, according to them. No retail middleman means more savings to you. Here, I'll make it easy. Go to MeUndies.com slash Burr and get 20% off your first order for free and free shipping. Save even more when you buy a pack of them. They guarantee you're going to be happy with them or your first pair is free. I got to tell you, I've worn them. Uh, they're great. They're nice and thin too. You know what I mean? They're not cumbersome. So if, you, if you're one of those people that wears your hipster jeans, you know, where they're tight yet sagging off your lack of an ass, I think that this is the underwear for you. And they come in very bright, noticeable, notice my ass colors. I think, I think, I think they're the perfect underwear for you. All right, stamps.com, everybody. Trips to the post office are never convenient. So why not get postage right from your desk with stamps.com? Stamps.com even gives you special post special postage discounts you, you can't get at the post office, including first class, priority mail, express, international, and more. You'll never have to pay full price for postage again. Here's how stamps.com works, everybody. Oh, first. No, no first down. Fuck. Brandon LaFell. Um, here we go. 
Here's how stamps.com works. Using your own computer and printer, buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package. They just hand your mail to the mailman or drop it in, in a mailbox. Fuck, I got the hiccups now. It's just that easy. It's no wonder over 500,000 small businesses are already using stamps.com. I use stamps.com anytime I make a poster, poster to send out to people, to send out to venues so I can sell them to people at the end of the show. And I'm a moron. If I can figure out how to use it, so can you. Right now, use my last name, Burr, B-U-R-R, to get this special offer, no risk trial, plus a $110 bonus offer that includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. B-U-R-R. That's Stamps.com. Enter Burr. Dollar Shave Club, dude. You know, I just realized how spoiled I am as a fan that we are up by 17 points and I'm sitting here doing a podcast with the game on mute in the background. We've gone to so many fucking Super Bowls. I mean, it's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. I need, to, I need to appreciate this more. I think that was a first down, wasn't it? All depends on when they blew the whistle. All right, Dollar Shave Club, everybody. Can someone tell me when razors got so goddamn expensive? Have I been asleep for 20 years? Is that what happened? I was in a store the other day, and one pack of razors is now 20 bucks. One pack. People, that is crazy. But hey, sometimes they give you a free gift when you buy their overpriced razors, which is, ash- which is actually just a punch in the dick. Financially speaking, that is. Don't get beat up by ridiculous razor prices. Get your shave gear where I get mine from dollarshaveclub.com. For just a few bucks, dollarshaveclub.com delivers amazing razors and other great grooming supplies right to your doorstep. I'm waiting for them to Dollar Shave Club to make a hot comb for your pubes. Uh, <laughs> do a little Fred- Frederick Douglass down there. Surprise the ladies. Um, their plan starts at just $3. Here's how it works. They sent me the candle for free, and every month they send me replacement blades. It's one less thing to worry about. You can get deliveries every month or every other month, however the hell you want to do it. They got lots of other grooming supplies, too. You know, I love the One Wipe Charlies. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, just watch Edelman catch a pass. Why pay $20 for Raiders? Raiders for razors when you can get the fantastic shave from dollarshaveclub.com for a fraction of the price. Stop getting smacked around by high razor prices. Dollarshaveclub.com razors are great and they are a fraction of the price. Trust me, you wish you've done it sooner. Don't be a dumbass. Shave smarter. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. You know I have to say it three times. Say it with me. Dollarshaveclub.com slash burr. All right. Hey, how about those Bruins, huh? They finally, for the first time this year, put together a nice run there. They uh, they played six games without losing, winning five in a row, and they lost one in overtime, but they still picked up a point. Then last, uh, the other night they lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets, but uh, they're starting to hopefully play up to... Uh, up to their potential. I love whenever whenever they have a fucking problem. Do you know somebody actually texted me and they said that they should trade Lucic or trade Brad Marchand? It's like, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, let's trade the guys to get the fucking team going. You know? I, I Just for the life of me, I just don't understand the panic. And they always pick like the star. I think people who say that just, they don't watch the game. They just fucking, they just... They watch the stars. Like if the Patriots start losing this. Remember earlier this year, they started blaming Tom Brady, saying he's, is he past his prime? Um, I didn't think that, but I was also one of those people that thought the, the I thought the Patriots were finished after that, uh, was it Kansas City game? And then we came against the Bengals. I, I thought it was, um, I definitely thought that we were done um, because I just felt like we kept, uh, I think you can hear it on one of my podcasts. I was saying how we had this formula where we would basically have a veteran player and right when the guy was getting his second or uh, his second to last or his last contract and he wanted big money, we would always trade the person away to stay under the cap or whatever. And then we'd, we'd place him with somebody that didn't have experience. And then we would be weak at that position for a while. We just kept doing that all the way around on offense and defense, and I I don't know. Trading Logan Mankins looked like a bad fucking move. But the genius of Belichick and the drive of Brady um, and the defense and all that, I was wrong. So 
I've been wrong about a lot of shit, and I don't think we match up well against Seattle, so I think I've, I'm hoping I'm going to be wrong against that. Granted, there's still you know plenty of fucking time left in this game. I'm talking about it like we already won. Um, anyways, how far into this are we? 46 minutes. I forget how long I talked in the other one. I feel like i got to talk to at least 50 minutes. Um, so anyways, I'm gearing up for this um, this stand-up uh, tour that I have coming up, and uh, I'm going to be playing – Doing a night of stand up, running my hour, hit flappers, possibly another place, gonna be bouncing around LA all this week, uh, getting ready to go, just going back to being a fucking comedian again. I can't wait to do it. I am so ridiculously excited to uh, go out to Southeast Asia. And uh, even though this time, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time in any of these places, but this is how I, I handled Europe. I just kept going there, just business, business, business. And then once I started selling tickets, I was actually able to slow down and uh taking some sites so i plan on doing that throughout southeast asia so there's some quick things that i'm going to do when i go to hong kong i don't know how long i'm going to be there but at some point i'm going to get some fucking dumplings touchdown patriots sorry there we go now it's going to be 31 to 7 so it's looking pretty good here um paul verzi would have called this game at 14 nothing it's over so, uh, I got to smoke a cigar with that guy. Jesus Christ, it's been a while. So, when I go to uh, Hong Kong, I'm going to, uh, I'm definitely going to try to get dumplings somewhere. When I go to India, uh, India, I think, is going to be, I don't know, I think that that's going to be actually a bigger culture shock than when I go to like Shanghai and, and, um, and Hong Kong. This might be ignorant of me. But I feel like I've gone to uh, Chinatown <laughs> enough times. You know what I mean? I've gone to San Francisco and gone down there. And you walk there and there's just so many people, uh, Asian people, that you for the most part feel like you are somewhere in Asia. But I, I've never been to, Towns don't really have like a little India. You know, they have little Italy, Italy little Armenia. Thai town, they'll have Chinatown and that type of stuff. But I've never gone to a place where I was just surrounded by nothing but Indian people. So I think it's going to be uh, an amazing experience. And I had a buddy of mine who actually, uh, one of my flight instructors, was just over in Hong Kong. And he said it's the coolest city he's ever been to, hands down, which is so fucking awesome to hear. Um, and uh, I also like China anyways, just because they were the underdogs where... As far as I, little I know about Asia, like Japan was kind of like the white people over there where they're like, we are the supreme people and we're now going to try to enslave everybody over there. You know what I mean? Um, they were sort of the, they had the European mentality and uh, I don't know. Everybody else is sort of the underdog. So I, I don't know. There's just something about it. Something I read about Bruce Lee one time. I read this thing that uh, the Japanese back in the day said that the Chinese were animals. So... Bruce Lee was fighting in this Chinese style, defeating these Shogun warriors. And after he kicks their ass in the movie, he says, by the way, I'm not an animal. And in China, they like the movie theater just stood up and gave a standing ovation. I was like, that's the shit. I hope that's true. So anyways, I'm looking forward to going over there. And uh, it's killing me that I won't be anywhere near the Great Wall of China because uh, that's definitely on my bucket list. But I figure if I keep going over to Hong Kong, and uh, I can build up a following over there. Eventually, I'll make enough money where I can then blow it on another. Pl I figure I got to jump on another plane. I don't even know where the Great Wall is. Is it in Beijing? I know I can't jump in a fucking Prius over there and drive to it. Um, I would be terrified to do it because I figure once I get out of Hong Kong, the road signs are no longer in English and I would be fucked. <laughs> so... Um, Singapore, it fascinates me. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I am nervous that I am going to say something on stage that will get me caned. Uh, I promise you, if I get into that situation, I will try to remain calm enough before the first strike to yell out, do Jesus, yo Jesus before then. And then any bitchy sounds I make after that, I don't want to fucking hear it unless you got caned. Um, and then I have all of Australia and New Zealand, and uh, I just think it's going to be, uh, 
you know, come on, man. This is like some shit that people bid on at the end of the fucking Price is Right, and I get to do it while telling jokes, man. I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much stealing money. Not to mention when I go over there, my biggest fucking problem is going to be uh, cigars because Cuban cigars are legal over there. And I, I kind of made a New Year's resolution that I was going to smoke only one a week. Because you figure that's still 52 fucking cigars a year. That's a lot of fucking cigars. Unless you smoke cigars, then it's a joke. So um, for the month of January, I unfortunately have already smoked five. I smoked one at the Rose Bowl. Then I smoked two during the Patriots game last week. I smoked two in New Orleans. And um, I was going to smoke one today. I was like, I can't because I'm already... For the allotted time, I'm already into February. So I have to somehow get through this week and my first fucking uh, week of Australia without smoking. But I got to tell you, uh, today, you know, uh, today was tough. I got a nice back porch area. It was really calling to me. Jesus Christ. I really, I, I, I am addicted to those fucking things. I got to admit it. I'm fucking addicted and I got to work on that. But anyways, that is the podcast for this week. Uh, congratulations to uh, the Seattle Seahawks franchise and all the fans that stayed and all the ones that were back there in the kingdom. Uh, My condolences to all the fucking fans of the Green Bay Packers. Um, Can anybody, anybody who's in coaching, there's got to be somebody in coaching. You know, I don't give a shit what, what level you coach. Can you please explain to me the prevent defense and just do you have any numbers? It has to work way more then it doesn't work. Um, I don't know. I just think as a fan, I hate it because even if we win, I still have to go through fucking the amount of stress that it puts me through. Just drives me up the fucking wall. It's just like you've been kicking their ass. Just keep kicking their fucking ass. Can anybody in coaching, please, for the love of God, help me. Oh, and by the way, I had an epic battle with Giannis Papas and uh, Paul Verzi. Got the Babe Ruth thing going again. I know it bugs some of you guys, but I know a lot of you guys enjoyed it. And actually trying to beat those guys. I mean, it was a fucking two-on-one, so I was taking my hits. I like to think I was dishing them out, too. Um, oh, by the way, Ver- Paul Verzi on the Verzi Effect sat down with Giannis Papas, and they allegedly destroyed me on the Babe Ruth debate. Here, here's some interesting stats outside of Babe Ruth to tell you why I feel like it was an inferior league. All right, Ted Williams was the last guy to ever hit 400. He did it in 1941. Nobody has done it since. So that's 70, coming on 70, 74 seasons going on 75 years. Nobody has hit 400. Yet, prior to the 1942 baseball season, hitting 400 had been done 28 times in a little over 60 years. Okay? Every guy who did it was white, and did it in an all-white league. And after 1941, it was never done again. Prior to 1941, they averaged somebody doing it almost every two years. Two to two and a half years, two to three years. Somebody hit 400. Honus Wagner, Ty Cobb, and some guy, Ed McDermott or some shit. You know what they have in common? All three of them, not only did they hit 400, they did it three fucking times. And this is what's funny. I brought that up to Giannis, and I go, dude, there was a guy in the 1870s or 1880s hit 434 for the season. And he goes, oh, that's ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. Compared to 1925, hitting 434 in 1875 is ridiculous. But 1925 as compared to 1965, to me, is also ridiculous. What you have during the all-white era, okay, What you have is you have, not only with Babe Ruth, you have straight across the board unprecedented offensive numbers. Pick off by the Patriots! Woo! Um, Do you know in the 1930s, I did a quick, quick research. I might be wrong for all you baseball heads out there. Every year in the 1930s, except one year, to win the RBI crown, you had to hit at least 170 RBIs. Honus Wagner hit 100 and – not Honus Wagner, sorry. Uh, 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 Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg had 191 fucking RBIs. Okay? 
And what you notice with all of these crazy fucking stats, guys having 30 win seasons, guys pitching double headers, guys winning 500 fucking games, all of that shit. What you notice is there's this ridiculous level of fucking stats. And then when the game becomes integrated, all of a sudden those, those numbers go down and they level the fuck off. All right? And I really feel stats from the 50s, 60s, 70s, touchdown Patriots, LeGarrette Blunt, we're going to the Super Bowl. Into the 80s, um, into the 80s, like those are le- leveled off fucking numbers. And some of the greatest pitchers and some of the greatest hitters of all time played from the 50s into the fucking 80s. And none of them came anywhere close to winning, hitting, long ball, any of that fucking shit. Other than uh, Roger Maris, who hit 61 home runs. Okay? I guess some, uh, I think Mantle hit like 57 home runs or whatever. But I'm saying, and then all of a sudden, you had a game that was just steeped in its past and all the great records and all the shit were all, all held by these fucking guys whose baseball cars were inside of cigar boxes. All right. And then you notice all of a sudden those records start getting broken again. They liven up the ball. They, they made the stadium smaller. They livened up the ball. They made the stadium smaller and guys started doing steroids and still the, the most fucking RBIs anybody ever hit was Manny Ramirez. 165. Sammy Sosa got 160. Both of those guys were on roids. And even they couldn't get 170. 180, forget about 191. Nobody's hitting 400. I'm telling you. And you're also talking about like all the pitches back then, the curveball, the slider, split finger fastball, cut fastball. All of those pitches were being developed. So you had a guy like Babe Ruth who had an any era monster talent. Showing up there, yeah, that guy's going to do some fucking damage. And he's going to put up unprecedented fucking numbers. And for these guys to sit there and su- suggest that in 2014, 15, if this guy fucking played, that not only would he hit his 700-something home runs, he would also be a Cy Young award-winning pitcher. It doesn't even fucking make sense. Okay? That a guy that talented could fucking exist And then never is there another guy that talented again. And despite everything that you saw an incredible athlete like Bo Jackson do, nothing Bo Jackson did as far as statistics go, despite the fact that he was was arguably definitely going to be a Hall of Famer in uh, baseball and arguably had the, 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 the talent to be a Hall of Famer in baseball. The fact that even what he did in his short time paled in comparison to what the fuck Babe Ruth did Babe Ruth played in an all-fucking-white league. And some of you guys will argue, well, there was only 10, 12 teams. And it's like, fine, okay, let's take today's baseball and whittle it all the way down to 12 teams. Would those 12 teams then go back to being only white guys? They wouldn't. They would still be the best of the best, okay? Which, when it's all legal and fair, seems to be predominantly Latino in that sport. So those people would not be allowed to play. And right there... It becomes inferior. So I feel like I'm still giving Babe Ruth 600 plus home runs for his career. All right. But he would have had to have decided to either be a great pitcher or a great hitter. That's how it would have fucking gone down. All right. And that's it. I'm not going to debate this any fucking more. I really feel that Babe Ruth played essentially. You had an any era Hall of Fame dominant fucking player that played against division one college talent and i think that is a fact and i don't give a fuck what you say i think because everybody loves baseball they're just so steeped in that history that is absolutely sacrilegious to talk about these fucking guys and the records that they had and their 500 fucking wins and all of this shit i'm telling you man come on at the beginning I maintain it. Watching Kobe score 80 something points in the 2000s is is more. I think that's more difficult to fucking do than to score 100 points like Will Chamberlain in the 1960s. That's just how I feel. You know, you got 100 fucking years of 
This is what it is. Defense wins championships. So if you're going to be successful, they figure they, they would pitch around Babe Ruth. They would figure out how to they would figure out how to neutralize his talents. Okay? Dude, Babe Ruth went up he was hitting against fucking an all white league. He went up against a guy who sold shoes in the fucking off season. Like these guys didn't even make enough fucking money. I mean, if you're Babe Ruth, you did, but this guy the level of talent he was playing against was so piss poor, this guy could go out and booze and eat cakes and hot dogs, not even work out. You know, look, I'm not saying the guy was, was, wasn't one of the greatest of all time. But, you know, when John Goodman gets selected to play you in the fucking movie of your life, I mean, give me a fucking break. All right, I'm done. That's it. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourself. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast, to NFL edition, NFL playoff edition, and they say this is the best week of them all, everybody. This is divisional. I actually like wild card week better than this week, to be honest with you, but hey, who am I? say, why is this one better? They say this is the best one. I like wild card myself, you know, but here we are, and Bill had a, Bill had a good week. Bill had a, I had a hope. I Boy. started good. Dude, I had, hey, dude, Paul had a rough one. If it wasn't, listen, if it wasn't for these guys, if it wasn't for these guys, I would have been O for all of it, dude. I fucking, I had to charge. Wait a minute, real quick, before we get into this. I, I, I still, it's beyond me, Bill, and you knew. The Los Angeles Chargers are up 27 to nothing, and the Jaguars threw four picks in the first half. Four, four. And they fucking lost the game. <laughs> they lost the game 31 to 30. And all of my friends like Bill and Bartnick and everybody just go, yeah, that's what the Chargers do. And I'm going, this is the best team on paper. It was fucking horrible. Oh, it was uh, I dude, like that. four, four. Um, it's well, what Bill, they do, you Paul. said, Bill, you always say, Bill always says, if you throw a pick six, it's tough. Then he throws two or whatever. No, I then used to say, if you throw a pick six, you're not going to win the game. Now, because they've so made it offense friendly, yeah, all of these sports, you know, you dunk on nobody in the NBA and you fucking scream like you're in 300 after you do it. And everybody says it's amazing. Football, now you have to throw two pick sixes. And then it's over. That's what now I think that that's the new rule, dude, because I was talking on my podcast like how many more of these fucking no name backups, Paul, are just yeah. going to step in. Yeah. And then do something that Joe Montana couldn't do or Roger Staubach, <laughs> like that kid Purdy on San Francisco. He won his first five games. Nobody's ever done that. And it's just like, is that because he's so good? Am I really supposed to think that or have you? Made if you tip the scales, I think they've made being quarterback as close to T ball as you possibly can because offense gets the casual viewer. Um, I, I don't know what, but I've never seen so many people from who gives a fuck community college step in for a guy that played at USC and just you know throw for 300 yards, win four or five fucking games in a row, and I'm like, who was this guy? Yeah, I don't buy it. Yeah, yeah. They, like, play to protect him, too. Um, I'm Skyler, sick about what's his face for the fucking Dolphins? Who the hell is that guy? Oh, Comes Thompson. in, goes blow for blow with Josh Allen, who came from the fucking Mountain West League. Yeah. Um, dude, I talked to somebody who was a Charger fan, and they go, Paul, I listened to your pick, and I go, dude, it was 27 nothing. I called my boy and he goes, dude, my buddy Verzi knows. I'm telling you, dude, it's 27 nothing. He was so right. And I go, dude, I'm so sorry. I said, I've never seen anything. He goes, no, I never said anything like that. I've never seen anything and like you that. You have four, not four. You have not four. I, Bill, I don't think anybody's well, thrown what four about picks. What the Atlanta Falcons did in a fucking Super Bowl. I know that was, that was unbelievable. That was unbelievable. I'll tell you what was deep with the four picks was taking that fucking sack. Knowing what was on the line. It was insane. I know. 12 yard loss. Um, so Bill, Bill, you had a well, you had hey, you had a better who didn't have a better week than me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Giants. Um, At some point I had to win something. 
We're going yeah, I into took Jacksonville. I just, yeah. as I was saying, San Diego in the playoffs, this is what they do. San Diego plays Jacksonville the week before the end of December. They win that game 35 to 3. Handily. <laughs> Handily. <laughs> going away. They all go to Orlando. They go to Disney World. They have a great fucking time. It becomes January. Here's here's how bad that game was. Stacy went to bed when it was 27 nothing going into halftime. Lucas went to bed. They woke up and my wife, who could give a shit about the Jaguars or the Chargers, looked at her phone and she just goes, "The Jaguars won?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I think right. that the Chargers logo should not be that lightning bolt. It should be Ladanian Tomlinson on a fucking exercise bike. The guy runs over the whole fucking league the whole year. You can't stop him. And then the playoffs come around, he gets hurt. He's got to be on a he's on an exercise bike. He oh, looks like man. he's in a Richard Simmons video. Well, the, the San Diego Chargers have the New England Patriots beat. They stop us on fourth down. They take an unnecessary roughness call and blow the game. This is what they do. This oh, is what they do. Dude, if my Giants were up 27 nothing and blew it, you would see me walk off like what when they held, what's his name? Kellen Winslow. Kellen Winslow. You, <laughs> you and Bartnick would be on one side. I'd have puke coming off my beard. <laughs> now imagine this, Paul, because as bad as what they do. Yeah. They still have that great San Diego weather because they're always going to be the San Diego Chargers to me. All right. Not the football version of the L.A. Clippers sharing somebody else's stadium. Clippers, by the way, getting their own stadium for whatever fucking reason, because it's not it's not 100 degrees out enough per year, er, uh, days per year. Um, at least right, they so have the nice weather, Paul. <laughs> what if you were the San Diego Chargers and it was so cold out you had to build tunnels underneath your street during the winter like you were in the Arctic? I'm talking yeah. about the Minnesota Vikings, Paul, who also play great. I can't even say all year. They play great up until about November. They get in the playoffs. It's a home game. Everybody has a juicy Lucy. They go down there. They're dressed like rapists, rapists and pillaging Vikings. And what happens, Paul? The karma of all that raping and pillaging comes back, <laughs> and they lose every year. <laughs> Remember that um, year they were fifteen and one, just absolutely <laughs> stacked, and lost to the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons, who invent ways to lose in the playoffs, they lost to them. What What is it about a franchise that stays that way? That stays that franchises are historically the same. For decades, it's really fucking weird, man. The players change, but the results do not. Dude, Chicago Bears, same team forever. Even my Giants. <clears throat> the Giants <clears throat> are the weirdest team. <clears throat> they beat a team that everybody thinks they're going to lose to. Then they lose to a shitty team. Like, er is everybody is the same. The then they're saying they need to get rid of Eli. They got to get rid of the coach. Then they get a wild card, and then they fucking won't go the whole thing and they beat an 18 and 0 new england patriots team yeah that's what they do catching helmets new york off their ankles and their fucking heads that's what they do so why would so why would you fix that there's no reason to fix whatever the giants are doing because it's working the vikings i don't know i mean i'll give right. it to them in the 70s they weren't on <clears throat> steroids what about the lions the steroid game what about the lions the jets same shit the lions are family owned from what i've heard and the initial guy that bought the team knew football, and that's when they had Bobby Lane, and they won all their titles, their last titles. And then throughout the years, it's just been passed down to the Fredos. And the bottom line is, you know, even if you're not into football, it's a billion-dollar fucking corporation. You're not going to get into that business when you secretly want to be a barista? That's yeah, what but they what have, is Paul. They have a fucking barista as an owner. But what does family owned mean? The Giants are family owned. The Robert Kraft owns the. the, the what is family? Family owned run. Family run. Okay. Like you have to go to the family. Hey, you got to go to the family. You got to talk to them. Like I, I talked to a guy that played on the team. He goes, "Don't ever fucking shit on Wayne Fonts. Like he had all these moves he wanted to make, but he had to fucking go upstairs and talk to these video player game, whatever yeah. they were. They weren't football people." Wayne Fonts, I loved that guy. Um, he looked all right, like guys, Big well, Pussy's uncle. 
Uh, he really did. <laughs> he, he had that old Italian. He had that old Italian. <clears throat> um, Bocce ball. Before we get into the picks, guys, we got to shout out the BetMGM sponsor. Best lines out there, guys. And uh, you, you too can play with us. Uh, all you got to do is you got to download the BetMGM app. Use bonus code BURR. That's B-U-R-R. -R, very simple. And guess what, everybody? Guess what? You put as little as 10 bucks in, they're going to match it up to 1,000. You got to stack for free even if you lose. All you got to do is you got to go to the BetMGM app. You got to download it. You got to use bonus code B-U-R-R, BURR. And there you go. And then you're a part of our show and you're betting with us and uh, you're losing money like I did last week. I'm kidding. We're going to get it back this week. <laughs> Here we go. Um, all right, so with the first game, Andrew, though, what's, what's the first game on the docket here? First game Saturday is the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Jacksonville Jaguars at the Kansas City Chiefs. Minus nine. Uh, yeah, I got Kansas City all day. Jacksonville, yeah. the yeah. uh the slipper turns into a fucking alligator slider, and they go I'm, right back to Jacksonville. I'm with you on that. I don't see them, I don't see them. Mahomes rested. I don't see that happening. So Mahomes is going to do the purse throw. Yeah. That Mahomes is going to do it around the – uh, yeah, it, it drives me up the fucking wall. It's foot. so stupid. It goes fucking half a yard, and the announcers are going to be like, oh, my God. It's like I used to do that delivering newspapers. Yeah, that's backyard football with your friends, and they're going nuts. It's like, yeah, he stopped before the line of scrimmage, and he did that. It's not that nuts. Right, and then the linemen can't fucking tackle him or touch him because it's rough, and so they got to, like, pull up. This Mahomes guy's I don't like the way he runs. Um, no, I don't either. His knees no touch. look, three yard pass. <laughs> fucking Magic Johnson throwing it through trees behind his fucking goddamn head. Oh, dude, you got to see this video. There's an old clip of Dan Marino practicing with his team. Like, and he's almost at the, he's at the 40, dude. And his teammate is in the end zone. And he just takes the ball and he fucking does around the back, dude. And it is a, like a 35 yard, dude, right? It was, it was nuts, dude. Um, All right, what's the second game, Andrew? Uh, the over-under on that's 53, by the way. If uh, I like the under, yeah, me too. All right, Chiefs in the under. Uh, next game, Paul's New York Giants versus the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's minus seven and a half. It was eight yesterday. Uh, now it's minus seven. I and love half. the Giants. I I think the Giants are clicking. I like them with the points. I like them with the points. I love the half a point. Take the Giants for sure. Dude, you Daniel think Jones. The Eagles are going to beat you three times in a fucking row. I I really don't, and I think that we're clicking really good. I think if we could keep it within a possession, we'll pull it off in the end. But dude, how about Daniel Jones in in Minnesota? Kid looked. I, you didn't see the game, dude. It was really awesome, man. Put up a stat line that hasn't been done. Eighty yards rushing, three hundred yards passing, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Yeah, awesome. yeah. In twenty twenty three, Paul. Yeah, and what about Purdy and fucking Joe Blow and and all of these fucking guys? You 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 guys literally have a quarterback from Duke. Yeah, putting up Purdy fucking ain't... Joe Montana numbers, Paul. I, I'm I'm done with this. It's an entertainment <laughs> league. I mean, it's an entertainment <laughs> league, Paul. You can do all you want, Paul. Every motherfucker out there now can throw for three hundred yards and run for eighty yards. It's insane. It's ridiculous. I mean, running for 80 is a lot for a quarterback. I mean, got to give a little credit. Is it? Running for 80? Paul, oh, they got five wideouts and they just send them down. <laughs> You're telling me a white guy from Duke can run for 80 yards in an NFL game as a quarterback. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I okay. love I love him being white. That's the funniest thing. <laughs> white guy from Duke makes it in the NFL. <laughs> Fucking White. wins a fucking playoff game and runs for 80 yards ball. If I told you 20 years ago that that was going to happen before fucking Jim Irsay and all those cunts yeah, changed the fucking rules, yeah, it, I, you would say you're out of your fucking mind. It sounds like a true-false question. True or false? A white guy from Duke <laughs> ran for 500 yards in an NFL season. <laughs> ah, it no. sounds like a movie Hollywood would buy. Yeah. Um... I like the Giants. We definitely agree on the Giants. Um, now we get into the hard games. What's the next one? Cincinnati Bengals oh. are in Buffalo. And uh, Buffalo, oh. Buffalo's giving five and a half. I love Cincinnati all Oof. day long. 
I'm torn on this one. I had Cincy all week. I had Cincy all week, but I don't know. Oh, you know what? Just to make it fun and interesting, I had Cincy all week, and I'm going to change it. I'm going to say Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs finish what they fucking started. I thought they were emotionally spent. I don't like how they played against the Dolphins, but I actually think that that's going to work to their advantage. I'm going to take them to beat Joe Burrow and the Bengals, and I think they're going to fucking do it by by six points. Oh, I don't know about that one, Bill. That one that one felt different when I said it. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, until the Bills win a fucking Super Bowl, they are the Chargers, they are the Vikings, they are the Falcons. It's what they do. They almost fucking blew it last week against some guy named fucking Skyler. Let me ask you this question. What happens to Buffalo? What happens to Buffalo and that organization if they go to the Super Bowl, like against the Niners and lose? Dude, dude. I'm going to tell you right now, if there's eight minutes left in that game and they're going to lose that game, I'm shutting it off out of respect. Bill, Bill, the pain on your face. In Buffalo. Dude, the pain on your face when I even was asking the question. Because I knew where it was going. Oh, I knew where it was going, Paul. You know what's going to happen is a third of the population of Buffalo is going to walk into Lake Erie and just say, <laughs> I've had it. <laughs> yeah, there's, actually, turn it there's actually, I would say, probably 8% of their fan base is rooting against Buffalo this week just to get it over with. Uh-huh. <laughs> and just be like, you know what? If we lose it to the divisional level, NFL films won't make another fucking chapter of us being these sad sack losers. But if we go to another fucking Super Bowl, and I, it, you know, I mean, you got to think as a Bills fan that you're like, if we're not going to win the Super Bowl, just lose this fucking week because I don't need to to watch this. <laughs> I don't need to blow another three grand going to fucking New Orleans or wherever the hell they're going to have it this year. Oh my um, god, dude! Would be I'm, worse. I'm rooting, It'd be worse I'm, if they lost if they lost this year. And then next year they went back, and instead of being excited for their team to be back in the Super Bowl next year, they have to go. Oh shit, are we going to lose two in a row? <laughs> what if it? What about this? What if it's Giants Bills like it was nineteen ninety, and this time the Bills go wide left, <laughs> and they lose to a white guy quarterback from Duke, and he runs for ninety yards. <laughs> uh, so Bill, you got the Bengals. I'm going to take the Bills. And uh, yeah, I mean that's gonna do. That's gonna be a good one. Um, over under forty nine on that. Over under forty nine. I I think I like the. You under. know what the fucking worst is right now <laughs> is their fan base is buying into the fact that that tragic <laughs> thing happened to their cornerback. I know that they're America's team and people are rooting for them. It's just like it's literally like watching Charlie Brown try to kick a football. It's like. Can you guys please guard your emotions? How do you not until they the- fucking win the goddamn thing? Can you yeah. please, as a Buffalo Bills fan, guard your emotions? They were my Super Bowl pick. I am rooting for them. Oh, they but were your Super- MGM, Paul. We got money on this. Actually, hold on. I gotta give. I gotta give a shout out to Bill on that because I had the Chargers, who had all the fucking talent. They, they should have. De- they, they. You can't. Paul, it's on you. It's on you. You've been what? You're a big boy, Paul. Come on now. You know what you said. <laughs> You've been watching football for fucking 40 but, goddamn years. But Bill. You know what Bill. they do, Paul. You know what they do. I have you been watching. They do. I've been watching football seriously since I'm 11, 12 years old, and I haven't seen talent like that on a team, a quarterback like that. You can't give up 27 yes, points. Yes, you have. You have, and you've seen them lose. Um, you told me you the Patriots. That's the greatest offense I've ever seen. You watch your own team beat them. <laughs> Still was the best. Still was incredible. You saw the fifteen and one fucking Packers. Minnesota Vikings lose to the goddamn Dirty Birds, and the next oh, week yeah. their cornerback gets kicked out of the game because he's out there banging horse. He He's hasn't missed a ball. kick all year. Remember that, Scott? No- you uh- saw Bill Belichick on the Giants shut down John Elway and Jim Kelly in the run and gun. You saw Bill Belichick shut down the greatest show on turf. That Ricky Pro was going fucking in. The dynasty begins. The dynasty begins. The dynasty is over. And your stadium is now a Whole Foods in St. Louis. They don't have a fucking team. Don't you fucking sit there and tell me you haven't and seen this before, Paul Bersey. And this I is will how- drive out to your house 
and I will clear the olive oil off your shelf. You ever say something like that again, <laughs> dude? I'm all my teams are out of it. I said at first, I said Chargers, Niners, and then I said no, scratch the Niners, Packers. So my my Super Bowl teams are out. But Paul Bill, can't lay off a team with yellow in the uniform. It looks like gold to him. He starts thinking about the chain around his neck, and he will ride or die. Your loyalty is what – you should have beaten the book by 20 games. <laughs> Bill, who did you have in the NFC, dude? I think – did you have the Niners? Dude, did you have the Bills and the Niners? I think you did. I don't – know who i had i might have said niners i don't think i did. who else would i have picked, I, well you you definitely said buffalo and i think for the nfc dude you were you were teetering with niners or somebody else so you you may have both of you we got to go to week one i dude. definitely didn't say eagles no you did not say eagles you did not say giants you did not say cowboys dude i, did think I say you have, tampa you either said you either said tampa or niners versus the yeah. bills tampa's Which, my green bay but you know it's Tom Brady. What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> All right, so we got we got um, we both have no. We he's got the the Bengals. I got the the Bills. And then now we go into the final game, which is the NFC, uh, big one. It's the Cowboys who looked really good in San Francisco. What's that line? It's uh, Cowboys are getting four. Cowboys are getting four. I'm taking. I can't believe I'm saying it. I'm doing it. I'm taking, I can't believe it, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys to go in there and get to Brock Purdy, okay? Are Brock you out of your mind, Paul? <laughs> Brock Purdy won the first five. No one's ever done that. <laughs> going to hit the kid hard. He's going to make a mistake and get flustered. I'm taking okay, the, the two points. scariest words in January in the NFL are Brock and Purdy. You thought Skylar What's-His-Face was scary. You thought Daniel Jones, the white guy from Duke, the white hope. Hey, hey, could run Andrew. For some yards. You haven't seen Brock Purdy against Dak Demus. Prescott, the Dallas Cowboys. Demus, where did Purdy go to college? We got we got Daniel Jones at Duke. I want to know where Brock Purdy. I'm going to bet you 50 bucks I could get accepted at that school. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to guess Wyoming. Colorado State. Ooh, you guys are both pretty close. Iowa State University. All right, we're right there. There you go. Neighbors. <laughs> Brock Purdy from Iowa State. <laughs> and me oh, and Bill I'll tell you right now, that is a football factory out there at Iowa State. Oh, How Bill, many Brock Purdy's have to come into the league before these scouts start <sighs> hanging around Iowa State? So, Bill, who you got? Four I points. got the 49ers all fucking day long. Because I'll tell you right now, when the owner of your team has more Botox than rings, <laughs> right? That's actually not true. He's got three of them. That guy, that, that that organization's problem is him. All right? I don't know what he is. He looks like he goes to Epstein Island. I don't like it. <laughs> he just does. He has that creepy, old, creepy like fucking laminated, I don't own a yacht. And nobody was even born in the same century that's on it face. So I got to go with the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. Shout Get out laying. to Harvey Milk. I'm going. <laughs> you got the going 49ers the... laying. Paul, wait, wait. 49ers laying. Four. Laying. <laughs> um, all right. That's probably a dumb bet. I'm just, I'm kind of going this week with who I think is going to win. Because they're probably uh, – I don't know, but that defense, dude, I think they're going to – I don't think Dak Prescott has the greatest team around him. I don't think he's the problem. I think people who just watch the ball think he's the problem. I don't think he's the problem. The problem is all the way up that super fast elevator, Paul. I think the Brock man, Purdy's – I think Brock Purdy's little special run here is is going to come to it's going to show its rear its ugly head in a big moment and i think the cowboys get to him and make him make a mistake and i think the cowboys go in there and win that game and go to an nfc championship hey paul game. i got a line for you there's nothing ugly about purdy <laughs> how about this how about this in the morning just in the went, paper? Don't jesus how about this one in the morning in the paper not so purdy not so purdy oh yeah they'll do that him. <laughs> 
All right, so now we just do a parlay. We do a parlay. So real quick, just just so we have this, Bill and I have the Chiefs together. We both have the Chiefs. Minus nine. Uh, we, got, we both have the Giants. Plus seven and a half. Take that he, to the fucking bank. He that's, has my, the, that's my fucking layup of the week. He has the Bengals. I have the Bills. Five and a half. Oh, you can take that to an offshore account. <laughs> he has the Niners. I have the Cowboys. Right to Epstein Island. <laughs> Over under is 46 on that. Hey, you heard the new bond that they're making? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, with, I, knew, I knew the new kid that they picked. They picked the kid from uh they picked the kid from that bullet train movie. Yeah, they you remember the man with the golden gun? Yeah. They're rebooting it. <laughs> I should have known. The man with the laminated face. <laughs> Jerry Jones is <laughs> the man with the shiny face. Uh, I thought you were serious because they just picked a yeah. new bond. It's about a guy um, with a yacht in his own island. And he's got this ray gun. He's going to, uh, I can't say all this stuff about a. He doesn't do shit like that. I'm sorry. He may, You may meet him one day and he may say, hey, bail man, just want to say. You're welcome at this park anytime. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, dude, fucking human beings over a certain age that are that thin with a face that shiny, I don't want to be anywhere in their circle. Yeah, no. Um, that all right, Bill, reminds let's... me of a certain, oh, I can't say it. I can't, I saw a fucking, I saw this fucking creepy guy one time at a game. He was hanging out with all of these, you could see it was all younger people and there's mainly younger chicks. I had good seats, Paul. I was down near the corporate cunts, right? So everybody went down to go get, you know, their free food underneath. And and he's sitting there. And one of the hot chicks came back early. And she and she had the uh, please don't sexually assault me empty seat between the two of them. Uh -huh. And he looked over at her and he he, he he tapped the seat that was next to him. And she, uh. <laughs> he had to get up and sit next to the guy. Uh. It was fucking awful. Uh. And I felt bad for it. But then on another level, I was like looking at her like, the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Why but are I'm... you all right? It's like you literally just felt your body go, no. I want to not only do I not want to sit in that seat. I want it's one of the worst things. They don't teach young people to listen to that little thing in their stomach that goes, this guy's a creep. Yeah. Uh, all I thought about when you said that was, if my daughter was ever around people with money just because of that, I did a, a bad job as a father, which would never I happen. wish I yelled, hey, hair plugs. She doesn't want to sit next to you. <laughs> don't do it, honey. You know you don't want to. <laughs> Your pubes have more snow in it than the North Pole. You're old. Wrap it up. You're old. Viagra's cheating. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> when are they going to get into that, Paul? What the amount of guys still out there banging chicks because of fucking Viagra? I mean, that's not PEDs. The amount of people that are on Viagra, like literally took it and their dick is standing up as they're watching ESPN. Go look at this guy taking steroids. I knew he was a cheater. Here's here's the deal though. If your dick takes a dive in its forties or fifties, dude, if your dick goes down early, you got to do something. You get into coaching. <laughs> you get a desk job at ESPN. On the Playboy channel, you start telling people, talking about your glory days. Dude, what is that? What makes a dick fucking throw in the towel at 50? What, like, what, what is it? Is it, is it? It's, it's like five decades of pop tarts and ho hos. Is it? Juice, sugar. Really? I'm not a doctor. I don't know what it is. Yeah, but you go from like this fucking horny young man who's like, yeah, to just like, eh. Maybe she sucks the life out of you. <laughs> you know what it is, Paul? It's all of those years of right as your ass is about to hit the seat. She goes, oh, honey, could you just do me a quick favor? And after a while, your taint starts to collapse. And, you know, the, taint, the taint's connected to the ball bag. The ball bag's connected to the... <laughs> Shaft joint. I got one for you. I got one for you. Ready? Ready? It's third and eight. It's third and eight. Fourth quarter. Two minutes left. One possession game. NFC championship. 
Okay, it's all oh, about Bernard this. Purdy all day, right under I, center. No, no, no. It's third and eight. If they get this, it's a whole. They're going to the Super Bowl. Your wife calls you in the shower, but you got to go at that moment. Do you leave the play? <laughs> no. You watch the game and rub one out. You send her flowers the next day. That's one of the easiest questions ever. <laughs> Ah, dude, I'll well, be honest. I was hanging from a gutter about oh, to fall from my death with my head on fire and the Real Housewives finale was on. I'm going to die. <laughs> oh, dude, really? it is what it is. Oh. And she'll have the nerve to cry at my funeral. Oh, my God, Bill, dude. You're kidding. My stomach is hurting, dude. Fuck. I'm getting all kinds of looks. Are you? Oh, yeah. My wife just came into the room. Uh, hi, Nia. Hi. <laughs> I love how you just said, hi, Nia. <laughs> just, just, I know. I'm like a scared. I, I'm like, I'm some in guy New York. Talk. I'm not yeah. here. I'm not here. No, my yeah. wife's cool. I'm not I, here. I, it's so I'm funny, not... dude. Um, You're that cool. Come on. All right, Karen. Go. I, I got to come home. To this. To this. <laughs> Come on, you got to do it one time, Mia. I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> That's our favorite line <laughs> in a movie. I'm what, sorry. What about ah! uh? You got to really go. Ah, she's she's starting to cry. Yeah, she goes. Ah! <laughs> starts to cry. Sorry. Remember, <laughs> he goes. He wanted to go to jail. He wanted to get away. That's why these guys want. That was my favorite thing of how dumb, like making how dumb the wives would be. He wanted to go to these guys that get caught. They want to go to jail. Like, do you know how ridiculous? That's not going to happen to us. The Bengals are going to cover. <laughs> they wanted to lose the tuition for this son. You know how you blow a 27 nothing lead with four interceptions? You want to lose, Karen. It's not going to happen to us. <laughs> so, <laughs> Asante Samuel got three interceptions in the first quarter. He wanted to, Karen. Oh. All right. Dude. All right, here we go. So the last thing, we're going to do a little parlay. Giants-Eagles, Bill. Giants-Eagles. Um, An NFC East rivalry matchup. Daniel Jones passing. We have choices. Daniel Jones rushing 50 yards under over or passing 240. Uh, anytime touchdown, one or two. Jalen Hurts, same numbers, passing, rushing. Anytime touchdown, same thing. Saquon Barkley, 80 rushing yards, 25 receiving yards, any anytime touchdown. Um, Isaiah Hodgkins, A.J. Brown, Devonta. you know, we could just go on. So, I like guys named Isaiah and Devonte. That sounds fast. That sounds like a lot of yards. Isaiah Hodgkins is the sounds Giants. a lot faster than fucking Daniel Jones to get more than 80 yards. I can tell you that. Um, Is that his GPA or am I really supposed to sit here and think that this guy's going <laughs> to. He's fucking fast, dude. Don't, you know. Dude, he fucking fell down. Because it's so because he's so fast. <laughs> yeah, this guy was running down the field. He, he he looked like me chasing after a toddler, and then he just <laughs> fell down on his face. <laughs> oh, you got such a there good you go. Hey, it happens. There you go. By the way, shout out to the Dallas Cowboys kicker who had to bear the brunt of all the fucking people out there that are so miserable with their life. I could not believe how much people were enjoying watching him having the worst day of his fucking life in front of everybody. You fucking hang in there. Yeah. Talk about a tough that right goal. there, dude. If I taught like a fucking class in college, I would I would show what that guy went through and then people's reaction to it on fucking Twitter. And I would be like, this is why you only have two or three friends in life. This is why you don't listen to most people because they're fucking miserable. I actually was hurting for him when on the third miss in a row, he the stare he gave at it after it missed. He he looked and then he it went from confusion to anger to just 
his his career. It was really fucked up, man. Yeah. It was brutal. Who the fuck wants to see somebody lose their job? Dude, I walk out of a room when a comic is bombing. When comics like it and laugh, I actually don't. When I see a comic up there really struggling, dude, I'll I'll I see if they're gonna get out of it with the next joke and I leave. Look, if they don't know how to control it, but if it's if it's a guy that's funny and he's up there laughing like trying new shit and bombing, I'll watch. Oh, that's that different because you're laughing with him. But right. like to sit there and watch somebody like, oh, just have one of those. Yeah. Oh. And then you and you see them sweating and they're like, oh, anyway. And it, I don't, I can't. Guys are like liking it. I'm like, I, dude, no, man. This guy's like, no, I'm out. I'm out, dude. I'm not big on that tr- watching a car crash shit. Although in traffic last night, I went around one, which made me feel bad. Uh, well, you know, commend you that you didn't go through one. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? You want to do Saquon? We could, Andrew, can we pick and choose? I can hated make- every fucking thing I heard about what to bet on there. I don't believe Saquon Barkley has, is going to fucking, if he didn't do it last week, he's not going to do it against the Eagles. Um. What okay. if he just breaks one, dude? What if he, oh, Paul likes that. What if he just breaks one for fucking 55 yards in the first quarter? He's got to. I think Saquon goes over 80 yards, maybe 82. That's a good Hey, Paul, game. you know what? This is your world. This is the Giants. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with you. I saw what you did on Rich Eisen, the Rich Eisen show. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I want that as a meme. You just go like this. You go. I did. Rich, Rich. I go, Rich. I go, we might go to the NFC championship game. Eisen goes, this is in August before week one. He goes, he goes, Paul, he goes, NFC championship game. I go, all right, dude, what do you think? I go, I think they're going to win nine, 10 games. And then I broke down the games. I was fucking almost nailed every one of them. You beyond broke down the games. You knew what kind of losses they were going to be. Oh, Rich Eisen goes, oh, he said disappointing. All right. I like the (laughs) adjectives. Because I like the adjective. I'm one game away from predicting the Giants in the NFC Championship on Rich Eisen in August. Let's go Giants and the – we'll go Giants with the points, seven and a half or eight. Doesn't matter. Same difference, right, pretty much? Oh, you got to have your people – if they if they win this week, you got to have your people reach out to Rich Eisen. I, I was thinking that. I said I got to have – uh I got to have my publicist reach out and go, hey, Rich, don't forget. I mean, he, he's he's got to owe you a Bud Light and a fucking hot dog or something. Some sort of oh, stadium t- tip of the cap. If Giants win, we're taking that clip from Bill and we're sending it right to Rich's fucking inbox. Uh, <laughs> I want to be in the booth. You got to have me doing the setup. Paul, you said that shit was going to happen on Rich Eisen. Then he got to you going, I did. <laughs> Uh, by the way, shout out to how great of a dude is Rich Eisen. Dead serious. Is that guy one of the best? On and off stage, just total solid guy. Amazing father, husband, person. And yeah. he's totally into sports. And he's a Michigan guy. There's nothing not to love about that guy. He Even if a... you go to Ohio State, you begrudgingly have to admit that he's a better human being than anybody on that campus. <laughs> he goes... I told him the story about how when I put my arm around Strahan at the stand when I performed in front of him and I looked at him and I go, oh, seven changed my life. And I go, I'm a grown man with children. And I actually said that too. And they all start laughing. So at the end of the segment with Eisen, Eisen goes, come on, yeah, let's take a picture. And we took a picture. And as he, as we took a picture, he goes, your appearance changed my life. <laughs> he called it back. It was so fucking, <laughs> it was so fucking great. All right, so here's he what used we'll to do, do stand up. I think he was a stand up first. He he started to stand up at college. He said, I think he did it for like three to five years or something. Um, all right, so we're gonna take the Giants with the points, seven and a half. We're gonna take Saquon to break one, get 80, get 80 in a divisional game. For some reason I'm seeing that. I don't see him getting to the end zone. I see him running diagonally, looking over his shoulder, and some fucking corner from the other side running him down. I see Saquon 101, 101 yards and a touchdown. Oh, I love it. And what's one more, Bill? Under now, nah, I don't want to fuck with the under over, dude. That's a coin toss. What's the under over? You want to do Daniel Jones anytime touchdown? Does that mean wait? Does hey, anytime I mean, he's touchdown? The great white hope. <laughs> does that mean throw? That means throw too, though, right, Andrew? Uh, no. no. 
We did right, this so, mistake last time. Anytime can touchdown we, is can, okay. So can we do? We can do Daniel Jones to throw one, Saquon to rush over eighty, and the Giants with the points. I mean, what's the biggest crowd yeah. this kid played in front of in college? Four thousand people. No, he played. Uh, dude, I saw him get rocked at West Point, and I remember going, "Oh my god, dude!" A blind side. He was like this. This dude from West Point fucking exploded him, and I go, "Oh my god, that guy's so slow." <laughs> now I'm like, "He's a deer. He's a deer." <laughs> oh this was a fun one this was one oh, yeah. of the most fun this was fun dude bill got me crying on this one all right everybody well there you go you got your divisional games you got your divisional games i can't believe i picked the cowboys and the giants but hey somebody's got to go down but can i just say this and this is going to upset the kansas city fan base and i'm sorry and i don't mean to do that because i know kansas city well, i great. think you want to do it and i think you should here's the thing I love being in Kansas City. I love the people there. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to be bad. If you had to, like, fucking give the city props before you talk about that team, this is going to be bad. I might step out of frame for this. There's something something about Patrick Mahomes and his camp that really bugs me. And I don't know what it is. There's something. There's, like, an arrogance. I don't know if it's, like, his wife and them yelling at fans ever since I saw that. I don't know if it's when he does a fl- like a flick. Thing. Listen, I've seen the guy make incredible passes. They kind of if I I, I want to see a little humbling of jo- of of Mahomes. Is that bad to say? I would say it is because he hasn't won in the last few years. He's one of the best guys in the league. He lost Tyreek Hill. They're having a fucking unbelievable year. My only thing is if you could just get rid of that purse throw. If I just don't have to look at him do the little fucking paper boy shovel pass and listen to some fucking, and oh, he's fucking, oh my God. How did they come up with that? And I'm sitting there going like, it's a forward lateral. That was what, well, they've literally made forward laterals legal. Yeah. You can fucking have your hand under the ball in basketball. <laughs> I mean, you can do anything you want now. Uh, Just score some fucking points so we can get some more mouth-breathing morons to watch this shit. I actually like Patrick Mahomes. I don't like the way he runs, and that fucking throwing of the purse drives me up the goddamn wall. It's not even his fault. It's that the announcers act like he fucking threw it 80 yards. Oh. There goes my fucking ticket sales. And listen, I, I just don't I, I just don't really I, there's something about them I don't really like. I do like Travis Kelsey. Maybe it's Kelsey. Every time he gets three and a half yards, he stomps around like he just won the MVP of the Super Bowl. And I love Andy Reid. I love everything about them except there's something with, I think it was. I know what it Andy was. Andy Reid's the only guy I won't go with. Andy Reid. Andy Reid's. I want to roll that guy right into the fucking all the way Why? to St. Louis into the Mississippi. Because it's Why? funny. Oh, oh. Why would you not like that guy? Oh, okay. I'm saying, yeah. He you literally looks him. like he works for the town. He does. Like he'd be standing there next to an orange cone as you drive by going, fucking do something. Yeah. He looks like he cuts down Christmas trees for people in the community. Like, he's just the best. <laughs> Andy! Yeah. Andy, Andy. <laughs> yeah. With his big puffy coat with shorts on and his sausage fingers. <laughs> How you know you what doing, it is, Mr. Verzi? It was when Josh, I mean, it was when Patrick Mahomes' whole, like, camp was going like this to fans. That's what did it for me. You That's- know what? Andy Reid, I got to say something. He actually looks like the BTK serial killer. <laughs> yeah, but if he, like, fucking let go of himself. Uh, no, I- <laughs> they look the same. Oh, BTK was big? He was just your typical bald, fat-faced, mustachioed Midwestern guy out there burning, torturing, and killing people. Well, there's not a lot to do out there once you get past the cornfields, and, you know, you got to find your own fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell I love you, it. nobody knows how to find the fun like they do in Wisconsin. Andy I mean, Reed. Wisconsin is... It's it's the it's it's a breeding ground for serial killers. <laughs> hey, but they're nice people though. Other than that, the ones that aren't serial killers are nice people. 
because you know what? All of those serial killers that they have in Wisconsin, they're all like Dexter. They only kill the bad people, Paul. That's why when you go to Wisconsin, you're like, wow, people are so nice up here. No, That's Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer, Dahmer ate all people. the bad ones. No, they Dahmer didn't eat bad people. I mean, you don't think so? No, unless you're. Paul, I can't believe how fucking serious you are. This is the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever said. Yeah, come on, man. I I think some of those guys were good shits. <laughs> oh, you said that so seriously. I was like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> uh, hey, Paul. I did. <laughs> All right, I got to get out of here. I got shit to do. Uh, all right. All Enjoy right, your football weekends, guys. Now, I know you get all excited about the playoffs, but also remember to savor this. Football's almost over. I hate to be Sucks. that guy saying that. What I fucking hate about this weekend is well, how many teams are left? Eight. It'll be four next week. Thank you. <laughs> it won't be five? <laughs> it won't be five. Paul, well, I'm telling you, man, nobody does the math like you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> after that will be two then it will be one <laughs> I'm Paul after, Percy, I will make playoff math simple for you all you the, need to remember is these two simple tips after the Super Bowl no more games. every weekend and you will come up with the right answer make sure you wipe double checks your work Paul hey, Bill, you after got the, eight divided by two right I did <laughs> after, after the Super Bowl no more games next week <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bill, Dude, I want to put a grand on the Pro Bowl this year just because it's fucking a great dumb way to start the year. I'm going to it. I'm going to go to it. because Where Pete is Dan it? It's in Vegas. Why don't you come out? And they're playing flag football. They're not even they're not even in pads. All right. I got to come up with a good lie to tell my wife how I can go to Vegas. Nia, what's a good lie to tell you <laughs> to go to Vegas? <laughs> I'm going to go to Vegas and buy you something. She goes, I'm going to go oh, to Vegas and buy, you, buy something. you something. That's a good one. Everybody wins. No, no. She's saying I'm lying, that I'm not going to buy her shit. She was trashing me. Yeah. yeah, but if you what if you did go and bought her something? What if I did go and I bought you something? What would you like over there, Naya? Yeah, huh? Some sort of uh, <laughs> some sort of something. Some sort of something. Some sort of something that yeah, over at the, uh, the, the Cosmo stores. All right. All right, white Paul. White leather bag. You know. White leather bag? Yeah. Prada, some shit. Italians really think that solves all problems, don't they? Dude, you give white leather. Hey, we got a war here with this other family. I said, hey, just send them something white leather. <laughs> Tell them you're sorry. Send them over a little fresh plate of pasta. Uh, the meatballs. Three, three meats. Make sure you get the fucking veal in there. I don't care. <laughs> okay, how? How low the nephews are. Put the they send Hitler, yo, know, they send Hitler like some white leather thing. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got in with Mussolini. <laughs> he bribed him some meatballs and some fucking white leather. Oh, dude, uh, you want to talk about picking the wrong team? You know, didn't do well on Bet MGM, fucking Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> well, why wouldn't you? They had Porsches and Mercedes. <laughs> Before oh, you knew what Hitler was doing, you know, I like this guy. This guy's passionate. You had no idea what the fuck he was doing. Oh, fuck, dude. All right. Go Giants. Have a great week. I'll All see right. you guys. I love you guys. Bye. I did it. I did. All right. I'll see you. And remember, guys, to bet, you got to be 21 years of age or older to wager in Arizona, Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Indiana. Kansas, Michigan, Mississippi, New Jersey, New York, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, or Wyoming only. New customer offer, paid in free bets. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. Uh, excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Uh, please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP for Arizona. Call 1-800-522-4700 for Colorado, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, West Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for Confidential Help, Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa, 
call or text the Tennessee red line 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-888-777-9696 for Mississippi. Sports betting is void in Georgia, Hawaii, Ohio, and Utah and other states were prohibited. Promotional offers not available in Nevada.